A true underdog, this is the story of the one-star high school recruit who walked on at Boise State for quarterback, got a stint in the UFL, and ultimately pursued his dream all the way to the top in the NFL. EA Sports. I'm in the game, and this is my road to glory. I was a star quarterback in high school, yet so under-recruited. How could that be? Well, Castle Rock High School was a 1A school in the state of Colorado, so compared to 6A competition in the states of California, Texas, to outsiders, all my hard work looked like stat padding on middle schoolers. So throughout my entire high school career, I had to assure anyone that wanted to listen to let me cook. And well, no one listened. There were no scouts in these crowds. The cameras weren't on, just my boys and their families witnessing what I could do on the gridiron. 5,000 yards wasn't enough to improve my one-star rating. I had one offer from the Colorado School of Mines, but I wanted the FBS level, so I walked on, and here's my combine to showcase my build for scouts. Clearly, running is my middle name. I ran the 40-yard dash three times and took my slowest time to minimize user error because we all know I didn't run a 4.53. 4.86 sounds more like it, and according to Reddit, a reliable source, as we all know, that is a 75 speed. Bumped my awareness down to 54 for two reasons. King Sponge got all the fresh content and my in-game awareness is superior with the fake spike. Don't be sleeping on my grippers. Not that it matters as a quarterback, but throw power 68 and throw accuracy 71 sounded fair. I mean, it still means I have the worst throw power and throw accuracy in college football, but look at these clips. I mean, just uncorking a 40 yarder on the run, dime. Might need some pointers from Kurt as I get to the next level. To top it off, 50 juke, 50 spin. Feels a little underrated, no? The EA Raiders came together and gave the one-star walk-on a 57 overall, so sit back and relax. The journey starts now. High school football at the 1A level was easy, but now we're getting our first practice with Boise State, and we're going to have to dial in. I'm surprised how we're doing this far with some accurate balls. Get a glimpse of that 70 speed on the run. McAllister sells us 4,000 XP from this week's practice. I think we're moving in the right direction. Week one against UW, the Huskies mean business, and Boise State's going to have to work hard for this one. We're going to learn an awful lot about our competition here if Malachi Nelson can make some big plays, or are we going to have our work cut out for us? And that's Bowen's big play. All right, I survived my first practice and first game, so it's only fitting that I now don the Boise State jersey because I've earned my first stripe. As promised, we're gonna bump up the overall to All-American so we get a smidge more of a challenge than last practice. With a little over 4,000 XP points, I think deep ball is a major upgrade to have. That brings us to 60 overall, 73 throw accuracy, 70 power. We're just getting started. Second week of practice, all about making some strides, and heck, maybe we'll get a chance at battling for the second string spot. Pressure coming in here. We're just gonna keep it with our legs. First look at that 69 agility. Scrambling out once more on the run insane play are you out of your mind reminded me how i used to play some intramural football here at boise state i just didn't have the cameras on shoot i might just make the executive decision we're gonna go up to heisman right after this practice there it is we have just enough coaches trust to battle for the next spot in the roster in the depth chart so we'll get that underway here very soon but let's keep getting some xp points yep as i said we're doing it again up to heisman already rainy one in boise we're taking on an fcs opponent in week two. First glimpse at that sweet sweet blue can't wait to get on there and make our mark as a quarterback but for now it's malachi nelson's team as expected didn't see any in-game action but that didn't stop ashton genty and the boise state broncos from walking right all over these guys Time for a position battle against Maddox Madsen. The coaches have been raving about King Sponge, saying they haven't seen a one-star perform to this caliber since they can last remember. Difficulty up to Heisman now, so we should have a lot more of a challenge on our hands. And, well, Cobb's dropping that one is indicative of that. Looking for a big play here. Just want to get our way up the conversation. I see you. Bowens breaks free from his defender, keeping that scramble drill alive. Uh-oh garbage pick last play here of practice i don't think we got the job unless we can get a big touchdown yeah that's not happening so we're gonna have to battle again next week air force visiting us today on the blue much better conditions and weather so let's play some football broncos up by 10 in this one against the falcons in the red zone across the middle McAllister gets him the first and goal if malachi and the squad keep winning this way shoot man we're gonna have our work cut out we can't be looking ahead to malachi nelson just yet because we've got maddox madsen a formidable opponent just waiting in the wings to get his shot as well but we need to prove to coach that we're that guy 
just want to find someone that can spring open or heck we'll take it ourselves. king sponge got the arm and the legs we gotta make good use of these last reps honestly not sacks costly another week we fail but we're getting closer it's the battle for the milk can opening kickoff going up against fresno state fourth quarter action malachi looking to start off with an exclamation point he's got terry the young tight end and that's a touchdown maybe this is the week we give maddox a run for his money all right it's getting serious in this one king sponge ready to work delivers a ball to bowens let's see if he can get some extra rack drop him back for the smash it looks like cobb's got some separation can't get too fancy and go for everything all at once but these outs man Cobbs is putting in work oh man oh man he caught that oh my goodness I thought I threw a pick under heavy pressure yeah that's right we're running a replay in practice mode because that was nuts let's hope we can capitalize on that even further and I like what I saw across the middle but a very inaccurate ball incremental progress but still a failed week Southern Miss giving us a little bit of a scare in this one as Genty's gonna catch the slip screen sneak around the side big play bit pedestrian of a line today for Malachi which is good for us and potentially an opportunity in the future but Genty I spoke far too soon about putting the ice on this one as Southern Miss scored got the ball back and is driving billy wiles and frank gore jr big parts of this offense and what a find choosing not to play with the clock anymore they're gonna take their field goal attempt if they can nail this they're up by three easy and southern miss holds on oh my bummer we are gonna fall short in this one and uh not claim the position again even in the rain this game has been fireworks and where on earth has our defense been as we've given up 42 points before we jump back into the position battle let's get this discounted robert edgar the fourth career boost plus fourth accuracy why not six reps remain Cobbs, what a machine out there gonna go all the way for six and that is our breakthrough moment baby 200 points remain let's not make this harder than it needs to be 170 points is literally all we need that's all we need baby and that's it right there bowens big catch the hat my friends is a position battle victory over maddox madsen just took us a few weeks but hey we're the worst quarterback in college football and we are growing week in week out let's get it man put me in coach i'm ready to play our first ever snap involved for the broncos is a point after attempt we got it man i'm getting good at this holding them balls for the kicker game on the line here for the wolf pack down by a touchdown a minute 20 to go fourth and nine what is lewis gonna do big sack does dalmas have the leg sure does okay we're the second stringer 64 overall the only way to go is up and next is the starting position so let's battle back to our routine practice reps we want to make these account as much as we can because we want to get to the position battle once more oh yeah tight end is so open you better go for six my guy thank you for the points bowens you could have had six you dropped the bag we're in provo today going up against byu a rivalry game Big kick here can give us a three-point lead as it's all tied up in the second quarter. I'm going to make sure I do my job, receive this snap, put a good one up, laces out. Yes, textbook. Impressive stuff from Malachi and the Broncos. We're going to walk away with a dub. Another accuracy boost available. You don't have to ask me twice. And let's keep this party going. Throw power, accuracy, and overall now up to a 69 nice i've been hitting the gym like a madman it's time to show off this new gun let's leave the practice on a high note just a couple more reps i don't have anywhere to go here we are in rams territory going up against colorado state and we're up 10 zip let's use that experience to pump our stats just a bit more it is already week 11 of the season and i'm busting my hump to get on that field already 32 points away at the beginning of practice here thanks to a great last practice subtract 50. potentially in a position to go up for the starting role if we just do well today let's take these reps angry i missed a guy too on the run what got off him and uh the angry reps are coming to play as we just earned coach's trust final rep should be able to go into challenge week with a nice little check down it's wyoming week in boise the cowboys are in town malachi nelson has led the broncos to a six and three season thus far and they're bowl eligible but you can never be safe in college football that's right malachi you better be concerned because i am on my way for your job as soon as next week but sure in the meantime no problemo i'll hold the balls here for our kicker 
Bang. Three pointer. What's this I see? We have a chance to go into the game on fourth and seven. Our first ever on field reps coming right here right now in Wyoming week. We're down by three and Malachi must have got hurt or something because I don't know why we're getting snaps, but we got to make it count. Show coach what we are all about, how we've been practicing, how we've been prepping. I'm going to get around the defender and do just that. First down from under recruited one star out of Castle Rock, Colorado. No one knew our name and we had to compete for this spot and opportunity. Coach is keeping us in, so I hope Malachi is good, but this is our gain, our chance to shine at the big stage. Add another milestone, our first completion as a collegiate quarterback. When you got Ashton Genty in the backfield, you use Ashton Genty. Do I prove my point? Genty carries us right down to the one. A little power option action here. Sponge gonna keep it himself. We got our first touchdown for the Boise State Broncos. That is a moment that we'll never forget. And better yet, I still get to hold the kicker's balls. This battle's not over yet. The coach has handed me the keys. Presumably Malachi still dealing with something in the injury tent. Nothing would start our lore in collegiate football like a big dub in the first ever game. Third and three, I'm gonna scramble here. He's got a small step on the man, but hey, we got some legs for a reason. I didn't run a 4.840 for nothing. Talk our talk. Let's go nine. Second and nine, running some verts, and we got a man. He might have a step. I lob one up to Bowens, and I just overlead him. Ooh-wee, that would have been tasty, but uh, hey, growing pains. Growing pains. Thankfully, defense gets a big stop, and this is it. The final drive, the final countdown, two-minute drill. Let's make some magic happen. Nothing like getting down to the opponent's 35 on the first play on offense, am I right? Let's do it again over the middle. This time, Prince, the big time young receiver. I'm gonna use my noggin on this one. Let's choose some clock. All right, coach, I respect you putting the ball in Genty's hands, but let's leave it up to number nine here on this play. And I'm gonna go over the middle and, oh man, at the highs of our first game action, come to a crashing halt with that pick. I get to see the field one more time with 16 seconds left. Miraculously, defense makes the hold and we had time left in this game. What in the world? I'm gonna go back across the middle. Riley Smith, I found him for a 31 yard connection. Let's hurry this up and uh, we're out of timeout. So I'm just gonna have to make a quick snap. Probably should have spiked it, but heck, let's just send it. Let's let it fly one more shot. Why not let it fly across the middle to Bowens for six? Oh my goodness, you cannot write a story better than this. We fell and threw a pick, but we rise again. And what a story about character because this moment right here is defining like no other in a young collegiate player's career. Man, oh man, the Boise crowd is in a frenzy and our guys on the sideline just can't contain themselves. This is ball game. The poise under pressure, already acting like a senior out there. The signal caller delivers six. Breaking news, Malachi Nelson's out for eight weeks. So you know what that means? It's our team for the remainder of year one and the subsequent bowl game. If Bronco fans weren't convinced last week, I'm happy to give an encore this week against the the Aztecs. First and 10. Got the squigglies, but who cares? We're going to make six happen right here. <laughs> yeah, about that. See a man over the middle. I got baited into that. And that's a third pick of the game, only in the first half. Looking like Nathan Peterman out here. I'm not going to lie. And how did he just pick that ball? We're about to be blown out here before half. First and 10, little slant action. I think I'm gonna scramble just a bit more. See if we can hit our guy, Peterman-esque out here. Went from an all-time high last week against Wyoming to like crashing down to earth. Make that six interceptions. I just can't see anything on the field today. It's all black and red. I know I'm asking a lot for throwing six ints, but I just need a little bit of faith from the coaches. <laughs> Seven ints. How many ints have you guys seen in a single game of Road to Glory? Let me know in the comments. Am I setting the record for you all? Because uh, I sure as heck feel like this is unprecedented performance. And trust me, it's only year one. So there are going to be a lot of lows just like this. Sending it deep. Bowens comes down with it and fumbles after making the catch. Branch recovers. Add another turnover to the list. Let's hit up our deep threat. We don't even got the arm. What am I doing? I totally forgot. 
I have a noodle of an arm, so I can't even get the ball to our receiver. And uh, make it an eighth in. If we didn't have the record, we got the record now. This to me feels like a get right game. Let's go punish some Lobos. My mantra for this one is to not force anything. If it's open, it's open. If it's not, it's not. And trust me, I had a lot of sleepless nights getting ready for this game. After throwing eight picks in a single game, I felt like I could cry myself to sleep. And to be frank, if we keep going down here against the Lobos, I might cry myself to sleep a little bit more. But hey, I've been meditating and you know what? We're at peace with that result. It's no more, it's in the past. We're all about winning now. And trust me, I knew that when I came out here to Idaho to walk on, I wanted competition. I wanted the big stage. I will win you over, Boise fans. Trust me. I got you. Quick score on the board gives us new life. I'm going to go deep. I just keep forgetting I got a noodle of an arm, so doesn't matter if our guys get steps. Off-season goal number one, hit the gym as hard as we can all them bicep curls for the middle is going to get open yes sir bowens keep cooking third and one waiting for the tight end to spring open there dude i am debated so many times right now this honestly might be forcing the issue but we're going to go for it and yeah you're seeing this correctly we got way too cute way too fancy and uh we just got our butt ripped by the lobos great trust the process guys you're relying on a one star terrible quarterback that's me and i'm gonna get you guys to the promised land here eventually <sighs> looks like i'm in for a second week of bad sleep but maybe i can make up for it with a key play right here we're out of timeout so it doesn't even matter lobos come on the blue turf and down us it's a disappointing day for Bronco fans. You guys already know coach is wishing Malachi was back and healthy, but new week, new chances. Just what we needed as we're hitting the low point. Dynamic Bank's going to give us some extra juice to go the extra mile. I just want to thank the city, the coaching staff for believing in me, giving me another chance. They haven't gone with Maddox yet. Let me show them why exactly I'm still the right choice. For starters, I'm a quick learn. I mean, I can pick up a new trick here and there. I'm a gym rat, man. I will pound the iron till my knuckles are red. I am hungry for greatness. And ultimately, I'm a good friend and teammate. It might sound a little cocky, you know, but when your back's against the wall and it has been your whole career, you gotta be your own advocate. Five reps left. If we can make them count, we might be looking at a job secured. And it all comes down to this. 260 points to go means we need a strategic midfield strike and the tight end was open failed and i could have had it let's oil up this machine because we're ready to go somehow we're back for conference championship week even after dropping two disappointing ones and once again right down to the wire to see if we can secure it with a couple plays to go play action works as designed we should have the job and McAllister goes up makes a play is that enough we did it the starting job is ours no matter when Malachi returns from injury. That means at 75 overall, we are the starter and can begin working towards veteran starter, team captain, hometown hero, and so forth. We can really kickstart our path to stardom if we face our PTSD, it's happening. If we can hold our mistakes to just the one, that would be a major improvement than the last time we faced the Aztecs, let's be honest. First and 10 on the verticals. We got a man. Cobbs connects for a major play. 42 yards. Red zone action. First and goal. Don't threaten me with a good time. Riley Smith. Let's make him pay. This thing going. Oh my gosh. I cough it up on the ground, giving the Aztecs prime real estate. Yes, it's ugly, but mathematically, we're not out of this yet. Down by 13 with two minutes to go. Still got all our timeouts, so keep that in mind as we're just going to launch one up to Prince. He's got it, and he's going to go all the way. Hold on now. We got life. And, well, all the defense can muster to give us was 22 seconds, so let's use it wisely. Coach out here really wants me to throw a slip screen at our own red zone here. I think not. I'm going to throw it to Cobbs, and that was a great decision. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh my gosh. Can you guys walk any slower? Any urgency on this team at all? Oh no. Anything here. Get down. Two seconds. Hurrying up to the line. Just need to snap it and throw one to the end zone. One. We got the snap off. I just need to chuck one up. So it's going to be you, Bowens. You got it. But he falls short. 
at the last second. No. Oh, no. Billy Bowens goes up, makes an athletic play, but the clock strikes zero, and just like Cinderella, we turn into a pumpkin at midnight. Oh, man, what a span of two weeks. We lose the championship game, and then we don't even get considered for a bowl game this year. Man, I'm sorry. You guys were cruising for a good season with Malachi at the helm, and I came in and botched these last three games. But stick with me, guys, because as a freshman, I have turned the tide on my game from a 57 overall to a 79 by the end of year one. I am ready to perform and take the, the realistic road to glory continues. A lot can happen in the span of one year. From under-recruited and ranked as a one-star high school prospect, to barely making the roster as a fourth-string walk-on quarterback, to moving up the depth chart and injuries thrusting us into a position to get some in-game action, we have already felt the highs and lows of being a college athlete and we're just getting to year two. Last year, we dropped a couple crucial games at the end of the season, leaving us with only seven wins, which was bowl eligible, but the bowl committee hosed us. We didn't get in. This year, the Broncos turn a new leaf, and they turn to me to lead them forward as their starting quarterback. I guess it's safe to say my eight-pick performance is out of sight, out of mind. But in all seriousness, I need to prove that I can lead the Broncos moving forward and bring them back to the dominant powerhouse that they once were in the 2000s and 2010s. Clocking in at 84 overall after off-season training, it looks like we are ramped and ready to go this year. 85 throw power, 92 throw accuracy. This is a long way from where we started at 57 overall. Malachi Nelson has better stats than us, but one injury was all it took. Kicking off the season in week one with the Chick-fil-A kickoff game against Ole Miss, they are 10th ranked in the nation. So yeah, we got to go get our reps in at practice. King Sponge, number nine, moving out. Let's use some of the wheels and the jukes, the non-existent jukes. Heard and coaches trust before the first games even started. We got to be careful when we go across the middle. Yeah, why not let it fly? Some verticals. We got a man. Is he going to come down with it? Yes, sir. Cha-ching. Believe it or not, in year two, mono e mono, Boise State is a better team than Ole Miss. Chick-fil-A kickoff game starting off the season right. I'm wearing the Boise orange, and yeah, we want to receive the ball. Let's get the offense moving. Looking for some early game momentum. King Sponge, his first snap as the starter, year two action. Let's kick off the season with a bang. Going to drop it off to Terry. Coach wants another play action, so sure, Coach, I got you. Just give me some protection, my man. Second and 18, looking for something across the middle, opens up wide. See a couple new names out here getting more involved. And Capels, well, that's an old familiar friend. First handoff of year two. Doesn't go to Genty. It goes to Dudley. And uh, that's an impressive run, actually. Caden Dudley and myself, two Colorado natives. So we settle for three points on our opening drive. Honestly, not bad. It was a mission success, in my opinion. And King Sponge got some nifty moves. Looked an awful lot like my combine, right, guys? First and 10, pressure coming in fast. I'm going to drop this one off. I think we got him. The pressure was coming fast in my face. Pause, but that's okay. Third and short, I don't have coaches trust to audible because I'd honestly give it off to Genty, but I'll find our tight end instead. Two straight drives, two field goals. Can't complain with that production. Across the middle, it just got absolutely baited by Cruz there. He looked open for miles. This is what you see. Look at this. Hello, <laughs> like, how is this a bad call on my part? Why does he cut up when he should have had the IQ to go across? Like, there's no one over there. I'm gonna keep it a buck. It looked open. So now we're down by a one point. Gonna go deep. Why not? And that's Capels coming down with a big catch. Three field goals for the Bronco offense. That's gonna lead to a safety. See a couple new names out there from Penry and Merriweather. Let's see if they got anything in the tank to help us out. There's Merriweather. You never know, Zamandre might just become one of my biggest targets to go to as I get older in the league. And Bolt, though, is gonna get us right down to the one yard line. First and goal. What did I say? Merriweather wide open, that's six. Boise State Old Miss in the Chick-fil-A kickoff. King Sponge with his first passing touchdown of the season. Six red zone trips today. 
Already three field goals, one touchdown. Let's make it a second touchdown, shall we? This will go a long way in deciding our fate. Dudley, four, six, touchdown. Victory formation beating a top 10 opponent in week one. I did not picture success coming this quick. We can already up our throw accuracy to 96 and jump straight to an 87 overall. As the starter finally getting some dubs, there's going to be less and less need for me to show you all practice. We're not fighting for anything. And every time we succeed, the more distance we get from the competition in the depth chart. 1-0 Broncos going up against the 0-1 Charlotte Niners. Surprise, we got a wide open tight end out here. I think he can cash in. Maybe I was off just a little bit, but King Sponge with the power option. Let's go. Up early in the first quarter, and our defense is underrated as we get the ball back right in the red zone. But when coach gives me my opportunity to pass, you know I'm going to take it. Touchdown, Capels. All right, maybe this thing isn't a runaway train in only the first quarter as Charlotte comes down the field, scores, and picks us off. Second and 10, a little bit of smash action here. We're going to drop this one outside into Merriweather's hands down the sideline. Big guy, big play. This game has become an offensive shootout right now. 21-21 just before half, and I connect with Caples on a massive play. What a dime from King Sponge, just launching one up to Caples and it falls right into the bucket. Seems like a good time for Genty to pick up the extra yard, sir. Second half in a battle. I think I'm gonna go across the middle just in time for Bolt. Third and nine, calling up the deep attack. The middle looks fresh and open, so I'm gonna lob one up. Merriweather, touchdown. Boise State, number nine, scan in the field, sees it open up, lobs one in, 84 does the rest. Charlotte's offense is doing what Ole Miss couldn't do. 34 apiece with 34 seconds left. That means it's got to be good luck for us as the middle just parts. I'm totally not a fan when coach calls up these weird screens because they don't go anywhere. And as I'm talking smack, the coach says, take this. Bolt all the way down to the one yard line. Coach, I'm sorry, big dog, for ever doubting you there. Let's just feed it to Genty for the win. No. The field goal unit comes in and seals it off anyways. Raging Cajuns week. It's time to rage. Ah, what a sight to see. Back on the blue. I missed it. Ouch. That is going to hurt. Okay, down by a touchdown already. We're going to go deep. I think he's got a step. Oh my gosh. What was that pick? All right, I guess this is how it's going to be today, huh, game? Really? Really? This is just hilarious. It's laughable, really. Making all the poor decisions today, but this one's not a poor one as King Sponge just has a lane, puts on a juke, second and 10 under the lights. We have to put on a show for the home fans, and that's the show they're looking to see. Touchdown, Boise. I like how we've been moving it down the field in this one, and I see a connection forming. It's Bolt, Sponge to Bolt, the Sponge Bolt connection is next tier here. We have erased the two touchdown deficit and we got a wide open streaking receiver. It's our man Bolt again. And is that Usain Bolt or Austin Bolt? Because that's another six. That's my boy out there making a play. What a dime, what a find. He's got some speed. A lot on the line, it's fourth quarter and I'm selling the team right now with some of my boneheaded mistakes. No one's giving me any pressure out here which gives me plenty of time to find Terry. What a hard earned one yard as Genty just tops it off. Hats off to the Bronco defense. They made the hold. We get to go in victory formation and end this game. All business in week four back in black, looking to get another dub and go up to 4-0. Down by 18 in the first half. This is embarrassing right now. Gonna dump it off to Penry on his comeback there. Wait, that's Bolt. Henry, who am I talking about? Bolt just breaks free, gets us right down to the goal line. I should have known that was Bolt by his big muscular physique. That was him all day. Wanting to cash in back of the end zone. That's Breersford. Do your shimmy, do your shimmy. We might have gotten a touchdown, but the Rams did too. Bolt, make a play. Yes, sir. Huh? Bolt. Running just a smidge low on time, I'd say, in this one. And I am a cornball, bro. Why do they always look open for like a split second? Chalk it up to the annual bonehead game. I don't know what else to call it, but Bolt is so open up the middle. All the mistakes though, too much. They're coming back to haunt me. Doesn't even matter if Bolt is wide open on this streak and we're gonna hit him for a monster touchdown. Two quick strikes, yet we're still down by like three plus touchdowns. In fact, we got another streak, this time to Caples. Is he gonna score on one play? I think so. 
Defense does their job. We still have an opportunity here. And I'm going to go deep to Bolt once more. We found him down the sideline. Is he going to go all the way? Almost. How on earth is the Rams defense crumbling here last second as we find a man that's Bolt again for six? We get the chance to be a hero with a minute and a half left. We burned all our timeouts on defense, but it doesn't matter. Going to go deep. Is that Bolt with a step again? Oh my gosh, we had him. From like 100 yards at halftime to over 500 now. King Sponge just going to take off with his legs, and we fumble it, and we're going to lose this game. What a comeback all for naught, man. It didn't even matter at the end. The mistakes early in this game proved to be too much. Bro, am I seeing this correctly? There's a skill upgrade called Polarity that gives you 99 speed, 99 acceleration, 99 agility, 99 jump for your entire career. Sign me up. The thing is, BYU, when they were watching the film, didn't realize they were taking on White Mike Vick in this game, as I have now 99 speed, 99 agility. This is going to be a cheat code. Oh my gosh, I am so fast. This is insane. I, this is clearly not turning into a realistic rebuild anymore for road to glory purposes. I, this is not me. This is not King Sponge. This is someone different. Bruh, why would the game even allow this to happen? Like this is so arcade-like, like it's not even a challenge in Road to Glory. If we wanna complete the comeback, it has to start and end with me dialing up the right plays. This has been a terrible game for me at quarterback, but we can make it all right here. Gosh, nope. Signing out, we lose. Now three and two on the season. We got the battle for the milk can and we can't afford to drop this one. Third and two, running the read option. King Sponge is gonna keep it. It's over. When you got 99 speed and you're running the read option, you ain't stopping us. Fresno State scrapping with us. They want the milk can just as bad as we do, but this read option, is filthy. They're probably going to be testing my guy for peds after how well he's been playing. <laughs> Stop it. When you're running a 4-8 one year ago and now you're running a 4-3, 4-2, they're going to test you. Goal, play action, scrambling. We can do it ourselves or we can go to Genty. We got all the choice in the world and indecision kills. We literally got injured at that goal line and we didn't get to finish the touchdown. Bang, bolt from downtown. We got hurt and taken out of the game on a sack. I come back in and we're up by only three. What's up with that? King Sponge keeps it himself. King Sponge goes all the way. Too easy. Boise State holds on for the victory on the blue. Both squads squaring up at four and two. Something's got to give. We got the legs. We're going to go across our body. Never a good idea. These are some year two struggles we got to clean up. Going for the whole enchilada here. Verticals. Do I have a man? What is that? Got the squad down into the end zone. Just needs someone to step up, and that is Terry for six. When King Sponge settles down at quarterback, he is as deadly as anyone in the nation. You can't spell King Sponge without let him cook. You get a tutty. You get a tutty. Aztecs score a touchdown. Honestly, I'm not really afraid of it. As we're going to break free, we're going to head all the way back around. Oh my goodness. What a seven yard run. That had to be one of the greatest seven yard runs of all time. But this fourth down, it's not about the run here. It's about the play action and dime to Breers for a touchdown. When we get moving like we did today, we ain't going to get stopped. That was a fun one. What an offensive performance by King Sponge and the Boise State Broncos. Did you all catch that in the last game against the Aztecs? We're the same team that welcomed us to college football with eight interceptions and we're not throwing an interception here. That's a deep ball. It has been a long time coming since we hit the road, but Bolt is going to secure that one for a six. The defense has scored more touchdowns than me throwing them as Capel's going to another big catch. Hate to break it to Lobo fans, but we weren't too worried this week. We're going to go back to the end zone. It's Bolt, our man, for a touchdown. This one is getting ugly fast. They're probably gonna have to wave the white flags at some point. It's just too easy. Would it help if I just bench myself? Like, you guys can take me out of the game because, uh, yeah. Officially out of the game, we smoked them. 65-9 is the final. I got benched in the fourth quarter. Leadership, yeah. Defense gets the stop. First play on offense. We're already in the red zone, scrambling out. I see Caples, he's got a step. It's an easy touchdown. First and goal, King Sponge gets the troops up to the line. We're gonna snap this one off quick, throwing one out, easy. It's time to talk serious about the Boise State Broncos. This team is for real. King Sponge just getting too crispy with it out here. 
I'm begging you for mercy, mercy. Two minutes left in this one. Let's just send him home with a dagger. And that's gonna be the bolt, our main man. Cold one out here in Laramie, Wyoming. We are battling at the highest elevation in all of college football. Not sure if that's gonna make a difference. Some of our teammates might be feeling it, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference for us in our game. We were from Colorado after all, if you don't recall. I went over to coach on fourth down and said, trust, trust me, I'm the sophomore protege you've been waiting for. There's some aspects here and there of our game that definitely needs to be cleaned up, but we're almost ready to make our ascent. I'm ready to start having that Heisman discussion next year for sure. The way this game's flowing, we might have to call off the dog soon as we're just pounding. Penry, what a snag. Bringing us right down here within the two. I'll just keep it myself. Thank you very much. This is not a drill. The Wyoming Cowboys scored three points on their last drive, and it's not going to matter here because King Sponge is going to gash them. That's the ball game. Just killed the clock to finish this game out. Honestly, it's a little wild, but we just feel a smidge unstoppable out here in the Mountain West. Am I crazy? Like, Caples comes back and just makes a sick play. Defense just caught lacking on this one. We toss one up. Caples springs free. What is he doing? Midfield, got the ball back. Defense hangs tough. We're going to try it again, see if it works. Oh, my goodness. This is Heisman mode, and I'm surprised they're getting exposed that many times. Only the second quarter, and it's already 21 zip. This is going to get ugly fast. Five seconds before half, I'm just going to chuck up the good old Hail Mary, see if someone can come down with it. And uh, that's the wrong guy coming down with it, Brian. Let's see if we can rock his world. He rocks ours. <laughs> this game's literally over. We could run the clock all the way down and go home, but one more handoff for good measure. The Broncos have been rolling ever since they lost that second game so many weeks back. Boise State Broncos finally ranked. Hold the front door. Should be the season finale going up against the Air Force Falcons. The Colorado native played high school football just an hour away from here, so he is well acquainted with the area. He's got all the family back in town for this one as he's ready to put on a show against the Air Force Falcons. Sacked for minus 30. Well, I didn't see this coming. Air Force strikes first, and we're struggling to just get anything going here. That defense is playing well. Third and 13. Man, oh man, offense struggling here. So we got a couple options across the field. Just throwing a costly pick, man. All right, new drive. Is that all out of our system? I sure hope so. We're going to go up and over the middle, wide open, tight end. Big play. Oh, yeah. Strike while the iron's hot, baby. Oh, Martin, come on. What's he doing? Not really sure why we're tripping right now. Oh, yeah. He's so open. We got it off across the field. Penry has nothing but green grass ahead of them. Go all the way, my man. All the way. Huge touchdown. Just before half, that's what we needed. Pressure was closing in. I got it off through a dart of a spiral, and we let Penry do the rest. Coach really just told me to go for it, fourth and 14. Must have zero faith in our kicker, and, uh, well, not much faith in my arm right there as I just throw a absolute duck of a ball. Defense got the job done for us. Now we're ahead by a good amount, and I guess I want to give it back to the Falcons. Really hats off to the defense in this one, giving us the position to score. Just under two minutes to go in this one. Defense can put the finishing touches on the game if they just step it up here. And talk about finishing touches. Robinson with a pick. Is he going to score? Pick six. Emphasis point. We win. Conference championship week. King Sponge up to team leader trust. Fresno State back for some more milk can action. This time, conference championship at stake. Get the opening stop on defense. Check. Opening drive on offense. Well, we're checking that box off right now. And I got so much blue turf in front of me and a blocker. That speed is unstoppable. Go all the way and fumble. Ah, oh, man. Well, that was a load of potato sacks. Now we're down 7-0 and just throw another pick. I guess... We didn't come to play today for the conference championship as he's going to take it all the way back. Pick six. I guess lightning strikes twice, and in this case, it's a very bad context. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. I can't wake up. Wake me up and save me. Merryweather, save me. We went down 21 zip here in the first quarter, but we're going to start off the second quarter with a touchdown. Finally on the board. 
not only am I having a horrific performance today, I think the whole team slept in because this is unacceptable. I have to start scoring like touchdowns now. From the way it's looking, Fresno State's gonna beat us and it's unfortunate. Just one touchdown and one defensive stop at a time is really all we need. I can lead a comeback here. It'll be a historic performance. I mean, we were down 26 points. That's unheard of. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Malachi Nelson was the spark this offense needed because I go to the injury tent and they score two touchdowns. I can't make it up. Second and nine, play action, big man across the middle. Dangerous play. I literally got hurt again, and Malachi came in and pretty much got the go-ahead touchdown. Like, MVP trophy of the game goes to Malachi Nelson. This is ridiculous. I feel like such a fraud and did hardly anything to help this school come back and win the Mountain West Championship. Out here celebrating like I did a whole lot. But your Boise State Broncos win the Mountain West Championship in year two. Herbert Gums Jr., Four tackles, TFL sack, forced fumble and fumble return. That's a big line. Fresno State with an all-time choke, but look at Malachi Nelson here. 114 yards, three touchdowns on five completions. What a dog. We need to work on our read and react ability, so let's upgrade that. A bowl game nonetheless. I think this is the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl in real life. Down quickly to a touchdown. We have to get the offense going because we can't fall behind. First and goal over the middle looks fresh. Right back to Beers Ford. From one star under recruited high school prospect out of Castle Rock, Colorado, to walk on to first stringer, and now Mountain West champion competing for a bowl game. This is giving me vibes like the Mountain West championship game. It's really pathetic how we're coming out so slow. I think we got a man. Boom, Bolt. U of A is wreaking havoc on us right now. I'm gonna go over the middle, find Bolt for a first down. Third and inches as the third is winding down. I'm scrambling out. I'm gonna keep it and get the first down, but we fumble the bag, dude. This is just not going our way, but it's time for some fourth quarter football. Well, bowl game hopes here on the line. We've had a roll to get up to this point. This would be a sour ending if it ends right here, right now. And I'm just gonna keep it. Yes, sir, King Sponge. Way to use them legs. That was an absolutely crucial moment here in this game. And that was an absolutely crucial end. I need to hit back to the drawing board, man. We lose this game. Such a bummer to get this far to a bowl game and we're gonna lose it. I'm counting I'm counting us out. I don't care that I just scored. U of A holds on for the win. What a sour, disappointing end to year two. Road to glory, Boise State quarterback from walk on to Mount West Champ to, well, Las Vegas Bowl loser. Next year has to be the Heisman year, has to be the year. Let's make a run. From one-star high school prospect to walk-on quarterback at Boise State to now a Heisman contender in 99 overall. That's right. We have been dialing in at practice, doing all the right things in the gym, and watching film so we can minimize our mistakes this upcoming season. 57 overall and rated the worst quarterback in college football feels like a distant memory. Now we can make the Mountain West our playground this season. U of A beat us in the Las Vegas Bowl, and thanks to our sloppy performance, at quarterback, we cost our team the bowl game. That cannot and will not be the case this year. In fact, preseason ranked number 24, Boise State has bigger fish to fry than the Las Vegas Bowl. We want that New Year's Six and a national championship. Rumor has it a successful campaign this season could spell the end of King Sponge's collegiate career as the NFL draft will surely be calling. A little preseason practice with the first teamers here at Boise State. I noticed no Caples and a lot of familiar names are gone, so we're dealing with pretty much a new receiving core taking the rain. Thankfully, we got Genty in his final season here holding it down for us in the backfield. And if you noticed anything about last episode, Austin Bolt was a clear favorite target of mine. I don't see him out here. Our friend very well could have graduated, but that's going to force us to look for a new receiver to be our number one. No one could ever replace my sweet, sweet Bolt. I'm sure going to miss him. Fresh looking squad out here. Is this what it takes to win it all? Merriweather, you're gonna have to be a big piece, and that touchdown looks good to me. Before we jump into the first game, it's only fitting we get Chick Magnet to upgrade our throw power to 96. Currently, we're the field general, and we're halfway to household name. Nothing like starting the season out with a bang rivalry game against BYU. We're 22nd in the nation, they're 23rd. Whatever you gotta say about BYU, that's fine, but this stadium is gonna look insane in the next-gen video game. 
you got to get a sneak peek in practice, but these are the receivers that we're working with, and they're going to have to become championship caliber receivers, as I just, what am I doing? Operation Throw Less Ints is not starting out too successful. We give up one right off the rip in our opening drive. Go ahead and place your bets down below in the comment section. How many ints will I throw in this year of Road to Glory? Julius Walter's already stepping up as a prime candidate for me in this drive. He's just cruising. Right down within the red zone, looking to score. We got some legs. Let's use them. Getting around the defender. That was filthy. With some next level agility right here on this run. I don't know where the defender was going. Yes, we need to be mindful of where we're throwing the ball, but you should see far less noodle throws, as I call them. Second and short, just about at the five. All we need is something quick here, something easy. Go into the back of the end zone. No brainer, Merriweather. Zamandre, the big six. You can tell just the poise, the calmness under pressure. It's just different this year. Already got Julius up over 100 yards. Love to see that. On the run, we're going to hit Julius Walters once more. He is becoming the next Austin Bolt. But Bolt would never fumble like that. Thankfully, we pounce back on top of it, and now it's first and goal. And that's Julius again. What a machine. King Sponge and Julius Walters just on another level in week one. Julius over the middle. He's so open. Rip. Play action. Thankfully, we get another chance. We're going to throw it. All right, now I'm just curious. What Heisman winner threw the most amount of interceptions out of any Heisman candidate ever? As Beersford all the way down the field. Second and 10 in the red zone. I'm ready for that curl flat, and so is Merriweather. BYU scores late in the fourth here. Really just need to close it out with the first down. Third and four, coach is letting us take to the air. We need the first down so we can get on out of here scot-free. And I throw a pick. I don't even know where I was looking. I was looking at the other side of the field. Wow, crisis averted. We still get in, take a knee, and end this game. But now we have three ends on the young season. Seriously? Hitting a dub against a ranked BYU team on the road is always no small feat. Not exactly a Heisman starts the year, so maybe Dynamic Banks and this temporary boost to 99 overall throw power will do the trick. We'll need it as we're taking on the Huskies at our home turf. Dropping back, we got a man. I see you, Penry. Come through for me. I'm gonna need to calm down. Something about playing on the blue field just gets me so excited. Let's ride. Bronco Nation, Beersford, is that your tight end? It don't matter if it's UW, Alabama, Ohio State, I don't care who's in front of us, we're gonna get this dub. Touchdown, threading the needle of Penry, baby. What a needle threading job right there. Booyah. Second and seven, tight end cross, some pressure coming in, lobbing one up. I don't know what just happened to cross in the middle of the field. They got tangled up and we can't even tackle them. I take the blame for this one, but look at the middle of the field. But what is this in the middle of the field? Th all of them tangled up here and we had the step the guy was facing the wrong way head head turned the wrong direction in theory terry here should be breaking free nope we just ram him in the butt our gameplay right now is a colossus flop just like that billboard sign i'm running straight ahead at colossus well an injury knocked me out for the rest of the third quarter so i'm here in the fourth quarter looking to finally lead the broncos to the promised land i feel like in theory we have the time to do it it's just a matter of are we gonna do it and bank says this is my last chance you washington has made me uh one of their choice words it's gonna take a miracle and a lot of french fries to make something happen and beers forward thankfully keeps the tribe alive first and ten coach has full four verticals here full on in the red zone bro i don't know about that that's crazy but we do get a guy open turn around and make a play son knock knock who's there opportunity and you blew it prince though you might have a chance oh that was such an inaccurate pass fourth and four the game literally comes down to this play so nothing left here to lose and what was that pass where was it going sugma man sugma that has got to be one of the most atrocious performances i've had in a while it's really a darn shame how that game turned out against UW, man because now we're gonna have to beg and plead the college football committee to let us in outside of UW, there isn't anyone really to give us a run for the money and Williams, dude, I'm having one of the worst first halves of collegiate football ever. What a step back. Thankfully, Air Force is 0-2, and, and they're not going to be able to hurt us as much as a team like UW would. As Julius Walters, my main man, welcome back to stardom, my friend. Inside cross on second and 10. I'm going to look over the middle here. Perfect. Julius Walters is that guy, pal. Back to the regularly scheduled routine of domination. 
boy, wouldn't have this been fun against UW. That's for sure. It literally just feels so unfair how much of a cheat code this is. We're dominating, and it's not even close. 346 passing yards and four touchdowns in the first half. We're not done yet. We want more. And he's wide open. Julius Walters, have a day. Defense pitching a shutout against the Falcons, and that's a big reason why. Pressure is so good. I got taken off the field in this one as we win 51 to seven. After beating down Air Force 51 to seven, what FCF school wants to see us next? I don't know, what do you guys think? Safe to say FCS is fairly outmatched in this one? I'd say so. King's Punch just gonna zip his way through all the way down the red zone. Go ahead and drop your final score predictions down below. I think it's gonna be 42-3. All right, I got the three point right, but we're only up by 16 against FCS South, and I just throw another costly pick, dude. Gag me with a spoon. All right, I need to prove I can do more than just throw picks, so I'm just gonna launch one up. Let's see if our receiver can go and get it. Julius, I knew I could count on you. When in doubt, just air it out. That's what I always say, and it works pretty good more often than not. Or just use your legs and be a hey, maestro. When I like getting extra aggressive with the ball, that's why I try to go to the sideline, just so I have leg room to fumble. Let's go ahead and set the home fans happy on this one with a touchdown as a topper. Nothing short of easy 33-3 to victory royale. The path to redemption continues going up against the winless Rams. Kicking off the game with an old read option usually works like that. That is the result I like to see. Sprinting down the sideline with a nifty juke, finishing it off for 30. Let's ride, baby. Let's ride. Let's run the triple option. I don't know why I flicked it. That was the one time I should have kept it. And now I'm forced to track this man down. I have to make the tackle. Play a little DB. Come on. Get him. 36. Dive. Nothing. Okay. I'm like Josh Allen of the Bills, man. It, a game's not complete without turning the ball over at least once. Maybe twice. Kurt Benkart, I need you to save me, Kurt. Got a couple open guys. I could just take it myself. I'm tired, but even while I'm winded, I bring it in. As they say, feet don't fail me now because my arm is failing me. Scramble out again. Like I said, feet don't fail me now. <laughs> oh, shoot. 150 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown from the QB position in this one. And I got open Terry. Why not just take it? Engaged in a battle with the winless Rams doesn't go far for the committee. Barring the fact that we actually get to that point, they're going to look at our whole body of work and say, heck to the nah. Just going to keep it myself with the legs as we do, and I lose the ball again. You guys have probably been screaming at me in the comment section telling me to slide and to get down when I'm running. I had to record this up in advance because I'm going to be out for a week by the time you're seeing this. So I apologize if uh, you all have been telling me to slide. But hey, check it out. No harm, no foul. Victory formation. We get the win. This one's going to be fun. Boise State traveling to North Carolina. It don't matter where the boys go. I think this offense is ready to cook. And I don't know why he just ran out of bounds. So now I can't even use him. Favorable field position gets us right down to the goal line. Easy plunge. Second and 20. Nothing to read option can't fix as we get around the corner no one to stop us it's nothing but green grass touchdown seems like the Tar Heels want a fight in this one as they're already back in it with another touchdown of their own Julius Walters lays out fourth and ten coach says go for it of course and we do drop it off to Merriweather big first down second and ten play action yep I see you tight end Dawson Touchdown. Tar Heels clearly not backing down from a shootout, so uh, that's good to know. Down by three. We don't want this one getting out of hand. And well, speaking out of hand, we're down by 10, but that quick strike to Terry is money. Cash in right here before the fourth quarter makes this a brand new ball game. And Hardy says, I think not. There's your classic pick. We do it like this, and the defense does it right back. We got the ball back, so time to shake, shake shake it first and goal quick strike needed there's the slant walters touchdown the defense bent but it did not break as they gave up a field goal which is a-ok -okay in my book oh what a catch flag on this is holding it's coming back seven straight completions absolutely clutch right now and speak of clutch well allen tar hills that's clutch and i am down for the count 
Knocked me out of the game and out of this one. Unfortunate reality of our situation sinking in here is that we're probably back to competing for another Las Vegas Bowl. Man, low-key, this Broncos team doesn't feel like we're all that this year. I mean, we had a better squad last year at this rate. All tied up against the Wyoming Cowboys, but no fear, because I can be your hero, baby. Well, I'll be darn. OT football against the Wyoming Cowboys. One play one touchdown one play is all we needed in overtime as defense gets the hold 21st ranked aggies 90 overall just like us this is intriguing 14 14 battle against the ranked aggies i got a wide open walters see across my body i think he looks open to me yes sir utah state ranked and showing a little mojo for a reason here they're up by a touchdown first down and a fumble every game feeling like a nail biter at this point nothing convincing that's a convincing touchdown though defense putting the ball in my hands with just one more drive that's all we need for three all we got left is 40 seconds dumping it out to merriweather making some catches we're just about in field goal range at this point but why settle for just three when you can go for it all honestly i'm confident with our boys that i'm letting some clock chew just a smidge all right smidge over now i'm scrambling and this is why i don't let it smidge all the way because i just got dropped and i'm gonna need to hurry up thankfully still got time for another play let's hurry it up and snapping it and throwing touchdown terry with no time left for the win boise state comes into utah squeaks one out against the aggies that was clutch g to the g back in the ap top 25 going up against the winless rebels does anyone know how to fix this black field bug it has been plaguing my game now for like the last month it didn't used to be a problem but now it is so because of that we're gonna let the computer cook I don't think the black turf is doing UNLV any favors as they're winless on the season. And uh, the computer so far slightly in Boise's favor, but all it takes is a quick touchdown. And now uh, that's going to be out of reach. Yeah, this game's out of reach here. Boise State wins. Going up against the Lobos next on the blue field. Snowy one in Boise, and this is really our first test against the elements. Play action man in motion. See if we can get something off here. Rain, snow, shine. I think we got it. Looking to strike. I think he's got plenty of separation for that. Snow is falling down. Genty is back. Love to see that. We sure missed him in the absence there, but Terry is so open. Safe to say the snow isn't doing a thing to stop us. Absolute decisive victory here. Even the backups came in. Hawaii makes the trek out to Boise to face us on the blue. It has been a snowy two weeks. This is not deja vu. We are in back-to-back -back snow games. You know, I'd like to think we have the upper hand in snow games because Hawaii, well, it doesn't even snow out there. Have some of these guys even seen snow? Wasting no time out here to dot these guys up. This is not much of a competition. What competition is this? Easy mode? Scrambling out. Just trying to make something happen with the legs. Good enough for a first down. Oh, yeah. What a bait, dude. He, he bit in, then went back and picked it. I fell for the trap. Six seconds out of timeouts. We got the boys down here. Is it enough to score though? And Randolph ruins my day. Dropping back. Why not let it fly across the middle? That's Beersford. Keeping things a little too close for comfort against Hawaii in a snow game. It makes no sense. Prince, get us ahead. As much as Hawaii scratched and clawed their way back in it, it was all ogre. Another victory on the blue in the snow. So far, perfect in the Mountain West. We got one final test with San Jose. Man, oh man, what could have been this year if all we did was win our non-conference matchups against North Carolina and Washington? Because the Mountain West is ours as per usual. I'm not too worried about it. Let's let Genty plunge this one in for an easy six. Maybe San Jose State was listening to me talk smack, and so they went and scored a touchdown. I got a question. Why are we down to San Jose right now? Let's fix this. I know I could get some interest in the draft, but what's holding me back is just that unfinished business, that national championship that looms. That NFL bag is for real, though, as it would easily change my life and 10x what I'm making currently just from the NIL deals I signed up for. What a run. Oh my goodness. Bouncing off defenders. Can we go all the way? This is insanity. Right before half we strike, bouncing off the opposition, swerving in and out. It was off to the races from there. King Sponge ties this up. Should I stay in college just one more year 
or go to the NFL. The choice is entirely in your hands for those of you that are watching. Let me know what you want to see another season of Boise State football, or are we taking our play to the next level? Not my words, but EA's nut up or shut up weekend. We're looking for a two-peat wanting to bring the Mountain West trophy home to Boise and wow, we're starting under some pressure. Down by a touchdown already, the defense gave one up, but that's okay, because we're driving into the red zone. Looking to top this drive off with a big score, pressure inbound as per usual, nothing we can't scramble out of. That was a big time championship game scramble and touchdown pass. As no state resilient on offense, scoring once more, so it's making it extra hard for us to stay up. Two minute drill, but who needs two minutes when you can do the dang thing right here, right now? Terry, goal line. Second and goal. We're gonna scramble out to our right. I think we got this one with the legs, bingo. B-I-N-G-O, defense was the name O. Defense big time, offense big time. Not much time left in this one, but why not score again? Just out here throwing lasers all for naught because Fresno State was easily able to score back. As anticipated, this Mountain West Championship game has lived up to the hype, and it's been a tight one. Oh my gosh, breaking ankles, making them fall over. Unreal parting of the sea on this spin move. Oof, filthy. Sent them both to the gulag on that one. One does not simply break ankles without finishing with six. That's what we're going to do. Fourth quarter play might be able to get the icing on the cake if I can just find an open receiver and he sneaks in behind all the defenders. That last touchdown I threw to Penry was the difference as Fresno State came storming back on offense. And the Mountain West Championship is headed to Boise State again. We are a championship caliber quarterback. We always believed in ourselves, but it always feels surreal to go from under recruited, counted out in high school to winning that championship game. Ollie Gordon wins Heisman. Yeah, we are on that list probably because we made way too many turnovers. Just put the finishing touches on my attributes. Let it go up to 99 throw power. And I was wrong. I have a matchup with 11th ranked Virginia Tech in the Capital One Orange Bowl. This is big time. We're wearing all orange in honor of the Capital One Orange Bowl. In the expanded playoff format coming to the new video game, this would be a game that would compete for the winner going on in the 12 team playoff and the loser going home. Had to get taken out the last drive because apparently I got hurt and the drive stalled after that. First and 10, play action, scrambling on the run. What a find in Merriweather. Looking to make some magic happen here in the Orange Bowl. No magic on that one. Third and five, tight end over the middle is open like no other. Who's gonna come out here and be my Michael Thomas? I need a slant god and there he is touchdown Penry just like you squeeze a sponge let's squeeze this bowl game and score another touchdown get it because you squeeze sponges and you squeeze oranges it's the orange bowl Boise State in the orange at the orange bowl getting it done just because we're up by a little doesn't mean we have to stop the air raid on the run getting one off getting a little too friendly with it <laughs> got a little silly and that's gonna cost us a pick and another pick and probably gonna lose a lead. Talk about being over the top extra with those last plays. And all the way down to the one, all we gotta do is take the easy route, it's burst forward. Defense held, but the best insurance is offense in my opinion, so let's go cash it up. Love it, does me dirty. All the fooling around has led me down to this moment. We're down by one in the orange bowl. And well over the middle, that's pretty heroic. Johnson with the big Johnson intercepts me once again the story of this one is costly mistakes help me hit my goal of 5,000 subscribers before the new game drops and if only some of you that are watching this hit that subscribe button it makes a world of difference i became a starting quarterback in the united football league but how I got here was unconventional to say the least. Headed into my senior season at Boise State, I got suspended by the NCAA. Just trying to make my NL bag in the sponge business, they got it twisted and accused me of involvement in the underground sponge market. So I had to hit up my lawyer to beat them allegations. But the damage was already done. My hopes and dreams from 1A high school football to one-star recruit to leading Boise State to an Orange Bowl, I was cooked. 
I couldn't finish out my senior season and bring the city of Boise a national championship like I wanted to. That job was up to Malachi Nelson now. Even my road to glory file was disgusted at the allegations and forced me to control a different player. So while my lawyer worked on my case in the background, I stayed focused on my craft, working out until failure, even if it's just two reps, and dialing in on keeping the dream alive. The grind was not easy, but the grind is always worth it. And so one year later, I got a life-changing call from the UFL. It was the San Antonio Brahmas giving me a second chance to play quarterback, so I wasted no time getting acclimated and won over the job as well as my teammates. This is how my season went. And it starts right here, right now. San Antonio Brahmas in the Alamo Dome going up against the DC Defenders. Starting off with a little gun empty split. Why not? Let's go deep to our man. We got him. What a dot into the window. Why not step up and scramble? 75 speed. <laughs> and uh, you saw all the combine we ran. 40-yard dash. My IRL 40-yard time equals that defense gave up a touchdown so we're back on offense just looking to get a first down here Goolsby couldn't hold on that leaves d to come in and try to get this 63 yard field goal does he have the boot here's the kick very accurate had the distance but it's honestly just short king sponge coming with a little play action here pressure all up in our grill Man, I'm not going to lie. It already feels a lot like uh, my Salona Beach Dynasty here where I'm just under pressure all day long and forced to make some tough decisions. Down 20 to 0. It's now the second quarter. I think it's safe to say that's all out of our system. Simmons comes down. To if they read the Boise State scouting report, you'd know that it's just, it's just commonplace. We got to get the ints out of our system. Once the ints are out of the system, we unlock a new level and we can start working as we're driving already into the red zone. I'm going to keep it a buck. This touchdown is going to get us all the more closer. And that's King Sponge. First career passing touchdown in the UFL. My mind is already on comeback. And I'm wondering what is the greatest comeback in UFL history. Someone let me know in the comment section. Well, shoot. Our touchdown did not mean much at all as uh, they score a touchdown of their own. Hold on now. Someone said let Sponge cook. And another open man. This time it's Tolliver getting a big gain clock is ticking i don't really know why i didn't call a timeout here uh so let's just try to chuck one up to the tight end we've got him and he's out of bounds with four seconds left could have gone for it but i said let's let destroying cash in for three money bro the brahma's defense must be a load of barnacles right now because we cannot get anything going all about that hurry up tempo just trying to get strike after strike that's our big receiver, Simmons. Sponge looking to light this thing up. And the X Factor is the perfect man to go to. That is a touchdown in a big one, to say the least. Our guy Simmons here, the X Factor, feels like a machine. As we're going to go down the sideline, we got a man. Balage, the Falcon High School product out of Colorado. We connect. But uh, hey, that is going to come back because he was out of bounds. Fourth down, 15 seconds left. Fourth and 17. Just last for garbage time. Why not have some fun with it? And yeah, we're going to need to come back next week with a better plan. That's to say the least. UFL football is back this time going up against the Memphis Showboats. King Sponge getting a golden opportunity here with the defense making an early stand. We're going to scramble, see if we can do it with our legs. King Sponge, 75 speed, plunging in. Touchdown, Brahmas. Come on, man. Let's go. Don't mess with my 4.840. Run a little mesh spot. Scramble out. We got a guy. Let's just dump it to him on the run. Sure, I'll spread the love to Patrick because after all, we're looking for a UFL championship and we're going to need the whole squad. It can't be an all King Sponge showcase. We got to spread the love. But in this case, King Sponge with a keeper. That's a touchdown, baby. All right, something's got to be off here three times in a row. Uh, I don't know how, but the defense is getting us the ball back in the end zone position. Lobbing it up to the big man. No good. Destroying comes out on the field. Looking to get this three-pointer. Put us up by 11. King Sponge back to work. Scrambling out to his right. Showing a lot of what he was able to do in college. Find the open creative receiver there. Got another empty set here. Scrambling once more. Usually when we get time, something's going to open up just like that. Perfect on the move. That's Kalen Balage. No pressure in our face. We find an open receiver. From one star quarterback in high school to walk on at Boise State to now leading the San Antonio Brahmas in the UFL. So what if we made a mistake and, you know, lost our opportunity in the NFL? 
that's okay. That's what the UFL is for, right? We got a second chance, and we can make it count. Thankfully, the UFL is here to give us a second chance because once we can show what we can do on the field, I think NFL teams will come knocking, especially if we cut those type of plays out of our repertoire. Thankfully, the Memphis offense has been really a non-factor in this one. Our defense doing a lot of good work. We have this one in the bag, but why not let King Sponge just top it off with another touchdown? King Sponge and the Brahmas were able to outdo the Showboats in week two. Back in the Alamo Dome, this time going up against the Battle Hawks. They scored quick. Don't know what's going on with my scoreboard. There it is. As soon as I speak it, it fixes. And Simmons is on the run. Stumped this one out to Kalen Balage Off his helmet, he still catches it, but falls over. What in the world? That is all good here because Donald D. LaHaye makes the 48-yard field goal and some. What kind of week will week three be? Well, so far, so good. I'm going to go deep to our man. He looks wide open. That's a touchdown. Down 14-10 to St. Louis. I'm going to hit our guy on the outside here. He's got just some room to rumble. Hand off, Patrick. Touchdown. We are going blow for blow with St. Louis, and I'm just throwing bomb after bomb after bomb. What a catch. Come on now. On the RPO. Give me that. Uh-oh pressure in our face just gonna scramble got one off somehow miraculously in a comeback catch of the ages there 15 johnson is having a big johnson type worth of game yo yep that pick was pretty much a dagger unless we just do something miraculous here and nah that's gonna seal it we lose to the battle hawks one and two man i didn't see this coming unfortunate the promise drop another one in the alamo dome winning on the road losing at home not a good recipe there really isn't much excuse right now for King Sponge. I mean, one and two, we're throwing for like 400 passing yards a game. That is true, but uh, where are the wins at? We're back at the Alamo Dome, taking on the Michigan Panthers. Let's go get a dub. You know, I'm not going to lie here. I think we got to get the dub and win out the rest of the season to get to the championship. I mean, if we're being realistic, you lose three games, you're not really in the championship conversation anymore. We're playing just like we played in college, high risk, high reward. We can score a lot of points. We can get a lot of yards, but uh, we're going to make some turnovers. Going to step out. Yep, we got out of trouble there. We're scrambling for our lives. King Spun's just going to throw a dot up the seam. He couldn't come down with it. Seriously, man. Buddy had six in his hands, but he said, nah, I don't feel like it. But 15, Johnson with the big Johnson always feels like it. Let's go out to 15 as Johnson. Yes, sir. Just running past, guys. That was... Uh, a little too easy. Johnson is stepping up as our star receiver. Not only do I want to get back to the league, well, so does Johnson. So let's feed Johnson and have a day, young man. Johnson, I'm going to trust you to go and make a play. And what do you know? He does. I'm connecting a lot with this Johnson fell out here. Like he's doing so much to help the squad. And on the run, I'm going to go back to him. Fourth and one at the three. Sorry, D. I'm going to take this one myself. I think I can do this. Uh, Johnson. Nope, deflected off a helmet. Unfortunately, me force-feeding Johnson didn't end up in any points, so uh, I'm forced now to just get some more points if we can. And Simmons, oh my goodness, 83, make a play. Nine seconds left, eight seconds left. Let's just get something quick. Three, two, one. Let's just step out of bounds, give D a chance. Destroying with a 35-yard attempt, it's money. Down by a touchdown, you know, we're struggling on the defensive side of things to keep this thing close. Look, I'll take the fall for my turnovers. I get it. That's costly. But at the same time, man, like, it's unbelievable how bad the defense is playing. I have 350 passing yards and a couple touchdowns, and it's just the end of the third. And I'm going to connect for another big one to Simmons. But look at this Garbanzo. Our defense gives up another touchdown, so we're down by 14. I mean, look at this. I am an offensive leader in this league for a reason. I mean, I'm putting up numbers, doing my part. And the one-time defense does something for me here? Great. It's at the end of the game, so now I get a chance to go and win. Definitely in hurry-up mode here. Just have to get grooving. And it is grooving. It's just that the clock doesn't stop, and we're out of timeout. So uh, I am moving as fast as I can. Getting a big play here out of bounds, maybe. I don't know. It'll all help. But let's go up and spike it. Nine seconds left. Can't afford to be stopped short. We have to go in zone. And I'm going to go to number 15. And we're short. And oh my gosh, we lost. My 
550 passing yards was not enough for the promise to win. We fall to one and three. Michigan Panthers beat us. This is getting a little redonky donk, man. I can't believe the defensive letdown that the Brahmas are giving us. Headed over to Dallas. We're playing against the Arlington Renegades. It's the Brahmas. It's the Renegades. A little Texas showdown. And, uh, well, we're one and three, so I think the championship hopes are out of reach. But um, King Sponge can continue to build his stock, continue to get some eyes on him by playing solid offense. Renegades won the XFL last year. Now we're merged, so this team is legit, and uh, they have talent. So that means it's going to be all the more important for our offense to just start buzzing. So I'm going to go deep to our big receiver, the X Factor. He comes down with it. Those type of passes, those type of catches will set us up in the NFL one day. Little pump fake, Johnson, money. That was sweet. This pump fake got him to freeze. Bingo. Touchdown. Oh, yeah. We got a step on him on the outside. That is Simmons. Routine. Money. Touchdown. Tragically, we have let the game go by the wayside, and Arlington's come back in. They have come all the way back to get the lead, so I need to go on this drive here and lead the offense down the field. I think we can do just that, and uh, Johnson's going to be a big part of it. Unfortunately, I underestimated the coverage of the safety he picks us off. The Renegades ice out the game after getting the ball back. We're going to lose. We had the lead. We had the momentum. Yet somehow our defense folds. We don't get any more insurance points. Yo, I don't know what is going on with our luck in the UFL so far. One and four. Back against DC, who destroyed us in week one in the Alamo Dome. This time we get a chance to take them on at their home turf. And they're up quick with a 7-0 lead. But that connection to Goolsby will get us right down to the red zone. 61 yards. King Sponge and his offensive prowess is just growing. And, well, yeah, the record doesn't tell the story. You know, one and four in the UFL, it's uh, a full team package, right? The defense is doing nothing to help the cause. Giving up a touchdown like 70% of the time is clearly not good enough for the UFL, not good enough for the NFL. I don't know what it's good enough for. Regardless, we got a chance here to show why we belong, and uh, that's a great way to show it. Stump this one back off to Balage. See if he can get sprung open. And yeah, those blocks kind of just parted. And I did not mean to show about there. Oops. <laughs> Let's just let it fly. I see him behind the safeties. Simmons couldn't hold on. I dropped that right into your lap. Sigh. Our defense never really given us a chance. And uh, we're down 10. Little score here goes a long way. There it is. Let's get three more points at least tied up. Touchdown to win. And one in five. Hello. King Sponge and the Brahmas are in Houston for the sight of this one going up against the Roughnecks. And that little bump on defense is going to spring our man all the way down the sideline for a monster play. We fell short in a moment where we could have been the hero. The reality is we're playing pretty good football. It's just that, you know, it's a team sport and it takes all the pieces to come together to make it come and play like a team. Because of that, we're still getting some scouts to knock on our door and I'm sure we can get a couple offers maybe in the off season. Oh yeah, Balazs just springs free all the way to the house. Touchdown. You know, this path hasn't been as glamorous, as flashy as we thought we were going to be as a top tier pick in the NFL. But honestly, this was the path we needed for our character. We definitely had things working in this one as it's fourth quarter action. We're up by 15 points. That's the most we've seen in a while. That field goal gives us an 18 point cushion. That is a wrap. We actually get a win. Our second win of the season. It took till week seven for it to come, but, uh, Hey, nonetheless, a win's a win. Let's just finish the season strong. Arlington's back in town, so that means it's time for revenge against the Renegades. Just don't have the wheels in the college playground to really move it. And uh, looks like Simmons might have a step. He sure does. Right into the basket. Oh, yeah. Deep to Simmons. Deflected into the arms of the defender. That's a second pick, and that's an unfortunate one. Thankfully, defense holds to only two field goals, so we can come back and throw this dot for six. Two-minute drill, that is exactly what Arlington's need to go gonna go down and do because we got six and we'll do it with our legs. Defense has came to play today. Uh I would say. I mean, we're up big with this score now that we just scored a touchdown out of thin air. I mean we were up three, but now we're up ten. 
And somehow we are all tied up with just a few minutes left. And that was crazy. The defender was getting burnt. Turns around, makes a pick. Somehow the Renegades score their touchdown, but don't get the extra point. So uh, that can give D a chance to win it. Let's throw it quick on the slant. That's Johnson just about to score down to the one. Two clock left on, handing it off. I think I'm going to eat that one on purpose. Because that's right, I got faith that this play right here will cash it in. He's ready. You ready? Goolsby. Touchdown. What did I say? The Renegades ice destroying as he lines up for the kick. I sense destroying isn't worried about it. Yo, I missed. I missed the extra point after getting iced. I thought I was right down the middle with an accurate click and everything. D can shake that one off and make up for it in a big way here. It's overtime. Renegades already missed their chance to score, and it's our ball. But since the Renegades did not score anything on their possession, literally all we got to do is get three points, and this game's over. D, here we go. Chance to make up for the missed extra point. 40-yard field goal right down the middle for the win. Renegades are going home. Brahmas are victorious. There it is, our third win of the season. Let's get it. King Sponge with a few turnovers, but 500 plus passing yards. That's a good performance all in all. Week nine against the Birmingham Stallions. The campaign continues on. King Sponge getting pretty close to 4,000 passing yards on the season. And that 87 yard strike to Tolliver is going to put him just about there. The Brahmas in this season really were no short of fireworks as 88 Tolliver again just rumbling his way all the way down the field, shedding a tackle. He has two catches for 159 yards already. With just one week remaining after this and the season pretty much lost, we uh, have no shot at any championship or nothing. But uh, there's a pick. What I was saying before I was so rudely intercepted was that the Brahmas already have offered us a contract to come back. But yeah, we're not just jumping at that contract right now because we want to bet on ourselves and see if we can get a crack at the NFL. Heck, if we have to, we'll be a walk-on for any club in the league. We don't discriminate. Victory formation. The Brahmas are coming on strong at the end of the season. That knee is going to seal it. Now four in five with one week remaining, we can get back up to 500 on the season. Another 400 passing yard performance. Final game of the season is against the St. Louis Battlehawks. St. Louis Battlehawks have had a great year, and uh, they're looking to cap off the season with a dub. But so are the Brahmas. We want a dub. We want to get back to 500. Why not us? This year's candidate for offensive MVP, clearly the best quarterback in the UFL. It's King Sponge, and we're on a mission in our final week. Going to throw one up deep to Johnson, because why the heck not? And, well, Hamilton is exactly there to tell me why not. Let's go ahead and run that back, this time to Simmons, who actually has a step on his man, Sebastian, for six. King Sponge with the dime. Going to be looking across the middle. He's got a man. That's Simmons once more. End of the season's rolled around, and we've gotten hot at the wrong time. But more importantly for some teams like the Battle Hawks with playoffs here, uh, they're getting cold at the wrong time. Might have spoke too soon about the Battle Hawks getting cold because uh, their team has gotten two touchdowns, and that was a catch. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Tight end's got a step. He hauls it in. goolsby has been a great addition. We're going to go outside with the strong flood. There's number 88. King Sponge, always a threat to strike from anywhere on the field. He got his troops down there and in the end zone. With just a few minutes left, we're only up by six. It's important we get some insurance to just ice this one out. Oh, yeah. I think he's got a step. He burnt him on that sluggo. 88 into the end zone. Sebastian's been toast this game. Battlehawks make a valiant comeback, but it's all for naught. King Sponge in victory formation can take a knee and send his Brahmas home with a conclusion to the season. A three-game win streak, 5-5 five and five record. Brahmas got hot at the end but uh all for not not to get into the playoffs king sponge showed anyone that was paying attention to the ufl this year that he is a dynamic quarterback that still has a lot in the tank so if anyone at the next level wants to give him a chance he's ready to go put in work if not the ufl is already ready to give me another crack at a second season falsely accused i lost out on my senior season in college the UFL gave me a second chance with the San Antonio Brahmas, and then I got a crack at winning the job in the NFL. Then I went back to the UFL? 
And there's a midseason twist I was not ready for in the UFL. A lot happens this year on our road to glory, so let's jump in. For starters, King Sponge was an up-and-coming Boise State University quarterback accused of involvement in the underground sponge market. Recently, I was proven innocent and won the case. The lawyer prevailed. I was found not guilty of illegal sponge trade activities, and this guy was. We got done dirty. The NCAA had the wrong guy, and this freshman receiver at a coastal was, in fact, a perpetrator, and he got banned from college football, sentenced to 15 years in jail. To make this right, NCAA partnered with EA Sports, and they were willing to at least put me on the cover of the next college football game. Not for the standard edition, but the deluxe done dirty edition. Not sure how I feel about it. Anyways, we were a free agent pickup by the Vikings after our first UFL season, given a shot in camp, and had a chance to get some in-game action in the first preseason game against the Seattle Seahawks. During that first game, we had some impressive plays, but then we had also plays like that. Big picks that sent us right back down to the UFL. We got released, cut, done with, and thankfully the Brahmas were willing to pick us back up. We had quite the offseason, to say the least. A lot has happened since the last time we played out here. Being a free man does wonders to the player, as now he can play loose, he doesn't have to worry about critics, and he can just go to work. And go to work, King Sponge will. He is ready to bring the Brahmas a UFL championship. Now in year two, he's much more seasoned and uh, making less mistakes than that. Surprisingly, the only constant that has happened in this offseason is that the Brahmas roster is fairly intact from the first season and Johnson to the house. And that is a touchdown to 83. Oh, yeah, we got a guy going across the middle of the field. That is six. We're all tied up. In case you were wondering, yes, D is back, still doing his thing. Though I know he doesn't want to be in the UFL much longer. This year, King Sponge is playing with a chip on his shoulder as he has something to prove to the pros. It is his goal to make the Vikings pay for their decision to cut him. Oh, man, that is a costly turnover here in the red zone. Defense holds the Roughnecks to three points, and it's up to the Brahma's offense to get down this field and go for a touchdown. And oh my goodness, that's a big play. We're planning and keeping destroying on the sidelines. We don't need a field goal. We want to win it all. And Kalen Bellage is going to have to play his part. 20 seconds left. Across the middle. It's a strike. We got first in 10 to go. 15 seconds left. I'm going to scramble. King Sponge just looking for anyone. He's going to take it himself. Does he got it? Just short. First and goal. I think he's out of bounds, though. All right, Patrick, these are the moments you are waiting for to cash in and be a Brahma legend with six seconds left. Touchdown. And let's go. San Antonio off to a 1-0 start. Houston Roughnecks down 0-1. King Sponge with the drive. That led his team right down the field for the win. Man, it has been a rocky start to the season. Yes, we win in week one, but the Brahmas are 1-4 in, in year two. This is ridiculous. King Sponge is doing all that he can. He's actually playing much better this year. We're going up against our rival, the Arlington Renegades in Arlington, Texas. We're like polar opposites right now. Brahmas are 1-4. Renegades are 4-1. And, and I think our championship hopes are pretty much out of reach. This week is the UFL trade deadline, so there are a lot of eyes and ears waiting to see what the Brahmas do. Early speculation says the Brahmas are sellers, of course, after going 1-4 and four in the opening start. King Sponge, of course, is hearing the rumors just like anyone else, and people are speculating this could be it for King Sponge, as the Brahmas are going to sell the shop. Sponge just trying to block out the noise for now and play a good game of football. And a good game of football starts with a little touchdown. Just outside the red zone, we can strike once more, and that is a wide open receiver touchdown. This is not the season the Brahmas had in mind. It's awfully unfortunate. So even though King Sponge has not put much thought into the trade block, it might be in his best interest to try to get himself over to a championship caliber team. Because if King Sponge can win a championship here in the UFL, all eyes will be on him and his team. It has been a back and forth battle against the Renegades. This is a really good squad. Little tight end attack might do the trick. Over the middle, that might work. He's got it. Oh my goodness. Way to moss that man. Just a little head top action, you know, nothing crazy. We'd love to see that. And we hate to see that. That was a ricochet int. In a back in a back and forth game, King Sponge can come out as a hero if he just steps up and drives his team to victory. Despite throwing a few picks, King Sponge has actually been stepping up to be a big time QB in this one. And uh, does that prove my point? 
And the Arlington Renegades, with less than a minute to go, can't come through, throwing a costly interception. With the game on the line, Perez was not that guy, pal. And what do you know? The one in four Brahmas come in and spoil the Renegades' 4-1 record. They're 4-2 now. Still got a shot at the title. It's anyone's division up at the top. Brahmas just looking to play spoiler. King Sponge served up a little 500 piece, and uh, yeah, Renegades go down. Bro, what? Before the game was even over, the Brahmas' front office was cooking up a trade to the team we were playing. They're sending Destroying and myself to Arlington. Literally, besides Houston, our other Texas in-state rival. And for what? Three riskier dudes that might not pan out? Because us two over here on the Brahmas, we're locks. What an insane span of a week it has been. There is King's Punch. First look in the Arlington Renegades uniform. It looks like the rumors were true after all the Brahmas did sell the shop. And then was it coincidence that Luis Perez also gets sick this week? So... Uh, the competition was wide open, and we took our game to the next level, securing the QB role. Just one week after the Brahmas came to town and beat the Renegades in Arlington, we're back at Arlington. This time in the blue and red, and you know what? I've been thinking about it. It might just work out for us in the end. We got a new cast of receivers like Vaughn, Smallwood, Arcanado, Canela, guys that we can work with and show scouts that we are versatile. We can play with anyone we throw out there. Not only that, the Brahmas are at the bottom of the division and the Renegades, if we win here, five and two looks awfully nice. In fact, five and two would put us right back at the top of the division and we'll go ahead and take a touchdown. All right, Arcanado couldn't quite get there, but we can finish it off. Number 11, big six. We're about to see a whole new side of sponge. This team is better equipped with a defense that can make some stops, so we should have plenty of opportunity on offense to get down this field. King Sponge dropping back. He's got a wide open man down the sideline. I saw that miles away as Vaughn's is just going to do his thing. Touchdown, Renegades. An underdog in every step of his career, King Sponge delivers the dime from walk-on quarterback at Boise State to Brahma's quarterback to cut in training camp for the Vikings, he's back and with a vengeance with the Renegades. Tight one against the DC defenders. We want to get to the playoffs and get to the championship game, and it starts right now with a win. And when you want to win, that's why you go and trade for a guy like King Sponge, who can also step up with his legs, lower the head, and get a first down. Wide open guy over here. No one decided to cover number 19 today, and we'll take a six. Talk about first impressions with over 400 passing yards and three touchdowns. King Sponge knows he can just run out the clock now and walk away victorious, but this one's for the fans. It's like Curry hitting a no-look three-pointer. Well, King Sponge can do that too. I don't know what just happened here tackle that man please okay well the clean game not so clean anymore after a turnover ties it up for the defenders 30 seconds left looking for that buzzer beater wasting no time to make connection with these guys as number 19 in a big way steps up for the touchdown arcanado sponged arcanado what a bond what a drive what a game winning touchdown pass here barring 20 seconds left king's punch comes through huge DC defenders go down with last minute heroics here from the Renegades. It has been one heck of a week beating the Renegades with the Brahmas last week, winning with the Renegades in the same stadium. Onward towards the playoffs we go. The best team from the XFL and the best team from the USFL will square up head to head. If we can just hold on to our division lead, we'll be there in no time. Finishing out eight and two, and they're taking on the Birmingham Stallions. These guys went nine and one in the usfl best of the best in the ufl come together in the championship game it's the best from the xfl conference the best from the usfl conference it's going to be a stallions renegades matchup king sponge has been waiting for moments like this the stage is set the teams are ready we're going to have a battle on our hands looking to play looking to have the game of our life king sponge needs to put on a performance no bigger stage right now than this the scouts are here everyone's watching there has been no game as big as this in King Sponge's young career, so he's going to have to show up in a major way. And Smallwood, that is a good play, getting us right down to the red zone. We don't need to make football harder than it really needs to be, right? Just hit the open receiver, move the chains. And drop him back, looking for his open tight end. He's got him. That's going to be a touchdown to kick off the UFL championship game. That is what I'm talking about. King Sponge to his star tight end, Canella. Canella's looking to make it to the league himself. Birmingham wasted no time to score. So we're going to call the read option. King Sponge is going to use his legs, and he gets a first down. 
He was a big read option type guy in college, and uh, there was no shortage of that at Boise State, and that's a risky play, going up to three defenders. Eey. We're going to have to go across the middle and hit a receiver diving for the ball. What a catch by Arcanado on that last one, and we have a wide open man here across the middle trying to get swifty with it. Canella has been a lot of fun to work with so far. Number 80 just has a knack for getting open. What did I say? He looks open again. You just can't stop him. Only fair that Canella finishes this off, and he will. With that strike from King Sponge, we are up by 10 points in the UFL championship game. It's the two-minute drill here, and to be more precise, we only got one minute left, so let's make this quick. What the heck? Where did Robinson come from? Bringing in Stallion's big pick. But what do you know? The Stallions give it right back to us, and that will spring our guy open here. Smallwood major play. Why don't we spread the love, go the other direction. It's Vaughn's who holds on big time. With just nine seconds left, QB draw. Why not King Sponge do it himself? Because that, that is why we don't do it by ourselves. Our defense has been absolutely massive for us in this game. I have not had to work hard at all in the second half. It's been a defensive showing. If you didn't notice, we're up by 21 in the championship game. I think we can put the nail in the coffin here. Victory formation, all things considered, I think King Sponge had a really efficient game. He did what was asked of him while putting up 400 passing yards along the way. No bigger stage than the UFL championship. And with the final second winding down, your Arlington Renegades are UFL champions. And what a story it has been from our, our name dragged through the mud in the sponge trade to getting traded by the Brahmas who just gave up halfway through the season. We landed on the right team. The Renegades, our in-state Texas rival, the Renegades were the right team to land on because we were just able to show the world and show NFL scouts why we are still capable at quarterback. I expect a few teams to come knocking in the offseason. It's the NFL draft. The Chicago Bears are on the clock. Round one, pick one. It's Caleb Williams, of course. Do we expect anyone different? But Brock Bowers with our second pick. Now, that's nice. And then finishing up with Brian Thomas Jr. We got some weapons out here. Got some dudes. But the free agent pickup of King Sponge at quarterback, the 64 overall backup to Caleb Williams, is pivotal. We had a chance with the Vikings to get a job, but nope, threw too many picks, got cut. The UFL gave us a second chance. We won a championship, and now we're here. Only problem is that we were a free agent pickup by the Chicago Bears who already have Caleb Williams. But first things first, let's worry about keeping our job by playing well in this first preseason game. Caleb Williams only going to go the first quarter in preseason game number one. He's connecting early with Keenan Allen. And just like that, he finds Keenan Allen for six. It feels kind of funny to say this, but the Bears are low-key loaded going into the next season. So Brock Bowers sold me on my first ever drive, but let's go back out to him. Maybe we can get a little rapport building. And it's a beautiful moment because that was our first completion as a Chicago Bear. A couple years in the making and a couple stints in the UFL has finally led us to this opportunity. The Chicago Bears gave us a chance as a free agent pickup. Now is our opportunity to prove exactly why we belong. Definitely not expecting to be the starter in year one here or for a little while. I just want to win the backup job. And we we can do that with a dime to Brock Bowers. Come on now, King Sponge to Brock. I feel much improved than our first stint with the Vikings. That's all them UFL reps paying off. Just gonna play one more quarter here before we go to the third string, and man, oh man, I like Brock Bowers. Within the five, I'm gonna go with the read option, hand off to Herbert, that's six. Encouraging look from King Sponge in a week one victory against the Raiders. We got to get all the momentum on our side. Week two in the preseason on the road against Cleveland. And welcome to the show, Caleb Williams. Already facing pressure from Miles Garrett. You can definitely tell that Caleb Williams is growing fond of Keenan Allen. And that's a big pickup by the Bears. Caleb Williams had to give Keenan Allen a bag and a new car just to get that number. And honestly, not a bad way to finish your week two preseason performance with a little touchdown to Keenan Allen. And man, I like this. With the second quarter winding down, we got a chance to run it back with some of the ones in DJ Moore. King Sponge making the most of his opportunity here throws a slant to DJ Moore for the touchdown. It was a decent showing for King Sponge in week two. Efficient with his few drives. Got the one touchdown, but we handed it off to Tyler for the rest. Bears pull through 14-7 in week two of preseason. Coaching staff's already declared that Caleb Williams will be the week one starter. So they're giving King Sponge practically the whole game to cook and we find a wide open Comet. Love to see it. This is truly our time to win the backup job and that handoff, what a run. I have got to play out of my mind because this could be the last in-game action I see all year. So let's make the most win the backup job. It's truly an honor to run it back with the ones out here right now. And I'm gonna hit DeAndre Swift in the backfield. Couldn't finish there, but I'm sure he can finish now. There he is. That's how you finish. Oh no, oh no. We go down awkward and hurt ourselves on that read option. 
and a sigh of relief we're back in the second quarter just had to sit out for a drive king sponge in the rain finds a wide open dj moore so he may only be a 64 right now but i believe we can play much better than that and when you got guys like keenan allen it's money this feels like a little throwback to college read option i spin and it's clearly not enough we are, however, throwing that ball on a rope. Making sure to spread the love, because that's what we do out here. We make sure everyone eats. Dropping back once more. Let's scramble it out. That looks like Brock Bowers open in the end zone. We find him. That is our dude right there. Rookie to rookie connection. Coach has seen enough. The Bears have officially decided to go with King Sponge as their backup quarterback. I mean, check that out. That's a clean game right there. 17 for 26, 236, and two touchdowns. So I hope you enjoyed gameplay because you're probably not going to see me on the field again until the next year. Sponge has officially done something he's never been able to do. Make the regular season roster of an NFL team. I mean, shoot, was Justin fields even the problem for the chicago bears it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the caleb williams show goes oh my goodness chicago choked a three touchdown lead in week one the rams come storming back and caleb williams couldn't do anything with that cushion caleb williams out here 184 passing yards two touchdowns and two ends in his debut i mean dude come on king sponge would never uh brother what's going on two and five for the chicago bears we lost 31 to three to the texans last week caleb williams you good man so who's gonna explain explain this 32nd in the league that's the worst in offensive passing yards per game with Caleb Williams and with all these new weapons I mean just scrolling through the last few weeks man's not throwing more than 200 passing yards in a single game it looks like end of your recap them boys fall short to the Kansas City Chiefs who win yet another Super Bowl even though the Bears had the worst offense in the league last year they went with a defensive player with the first pick Princely's definitely a stud nothing against him but the offense is going to need some work or Caleb Williams or King Sponge just going to have to step up their game. Despite the Bears going 5-12 and 12 in year one, they're up to an 87 overall to start of year two. Not sure if something's in the water, but they're thinking that the Bears will do big things this year. King Sponge couldn't keep it himself, but no worries. We'll shake it off with the two-minute drill here and do what Caleb Williams couldn't score for the team and get us right back in this game. Fourth quarter action. The Bears are on the board after a rushing touchdown from Brock Bowers, but we're back in the air fumble ruski oh man king sponge for the most part pretty efficient with his clip 75 percent gonna go across yep we got him all day year two preseason is extremely important for us we're playing like we can still win the job winners always have that mentality we ain't counting ourselves out just because there's a guy named caleb williams on the team and if we can strike with our second stringers out here, our team is going to be impressed because look at that touchdown. King Sponge dialed up a ball, and I guess our defense did their best. We got, like, no time left and a chance to drive and score. Down by six. We're looking for a little bit of preseason heroics, and I might have a guy. I totally forgot this wasn't college, and we have no timeout, so we have to make this strike count. And it's going to clock winding down. Totally hurt us. But oh my goodness, how did that work? You are seeing that right. King Sponge heroics in preseason week one. Cole Komet comes back for it, fights for it, touchdown. We're going to win. I didn't have an initial reaction because I thought that was a dangerous pass, just tossing it up there. Justin Fields, not too hot. You see the scoreboard behind Caleb Williams correctly. It's 21-0. Ravens taking care of business in the first half. Caleb was able to muster up one touchdown for us, but I'm going to do what I do best, mop-up duty and my typical QB play. Check me out. Tyler Scott, special delivery, my friend. Working my way down towards the red zone. We can come up big here, and we do. Cole Komet, King's Punch, been working hard in the offseason, finds Rashawn Johnson. We're all tied up. It's fourth down game on the line right here, right now, looking for someone, and we have a wide open receiver. How did he get so sprung free? Touchdown, King King Sponge, the hero, strikes. Unbelievable. That's two weeks in a row now King Sponge has delivered up potentially the game winner. Bombs away to Tyler Scott. Caleb Williams is trembling on the sidelines. This is insane QB play. Well, that was short-lived. The defense went ahead and choked it, so we lose the game, but that does not take away from the performance King Sponge just had. Final week of preseason up in Indianapolis for this one. I was wondering when coach would put us in. It's the fourth quarter and we finally get an action here. Caleb 
Caleb Williams was only able to muster up nine points. And even worse, we're losing, but it's okay. I can play hero. I don't mind that role at all. Just going to take the sure thing. Hand off to Roshan. Finish this off, my man. Caleb Williams probably going to get the starting role in week one. I expect nothing different, but we had one heck of a preseason. On third down with less than a minute, King Sponge only needed a first down to officially ice this game, and he finds his receiver slipping through the cracks. Caleb Williams is going to start again in year two, but we definitely deserve the accolade for best preseason player of the year. Let's keep pumping strong arm as in year two, we've been hitting the gym hard. We're already up to 71 overall. Time to flex in the Vikings and man, I wish I was QB for this game. Two years in the books. Is it something with Chicago? Is it a Caleb Williams thing? Not that great of a year. 2,500 yards and 16 touchdowns in 17 weeks of NFL football. That's less than one touchdown per game. And it's super confusing to me because the Bears go 6-11 and 11 in year two with Caleb Williams in an 88 overall team. Am I missing something here? All I know is King Sponge is getting a little antsy here. He's up to 76 overall through two years of professional NFL football. He's doing all the right things in the film room, in the weight room. Man would be a serviceable quarterback on a handful of teams. 2025 recap, Tampa Bay gets the dub in the Super Bowl over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hoping to turn the tide in year three, 2026. I want to start somewhere, even if it means I have to get traded. In the NFL draft in round one, the Bears choose Zachariah Branch as their receiver of choice. The USC receiver should be reuniting with Caleb Williams, which that might spell bad news for us. I guess we just love playing the Colts in the preseason as this is the third year in a row, I believe. Caleb Williams scored in a couple touchdowns in this one, so he did his part, and now it's my turn to do my part. First scrambling touchdown. Hey, jot it down. Two-minute drill here. The defense gave up points, which is unfortunate, but that's an opportunity for King Sponge to take his time find the right guy and move down the field. It literally feels like we're out here with third stringers right now, but we'll make it work. We got the field goal, but the Colts also were able to drive down the field and get a field goal of their own. So I guess that means it ends in a draw in week one. 24-24, no OT football here. Final week of preseason going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh no, you hate to see it. The injury timeout. Oh no, you hate to see it. Caleb Williams got injured on the sideline. The injury did not look good. We'll know more after the game, but he was clearly frustrated on the sidelines, so we're going to have to step in. And King Sponge is always ready to step in and take on a challenge just like that. Touchdown, baby. All right, I spoke too soon, but that touchdown at the one-yard line will cap it off. Down 35-7. to seven. Yeah, the game's over, but I'm just playing for pride, just trying to get my name on the map. Final reps of preseason count all the same when it matters for the coaches and their decisions. So Chiefs do what they usually do, get the dub, but it's preseason and it's all wrapped up. I think we had a pretty solid preseason in year three. If Caleb Williams didn't go down with that injury, we'd probably be on the bench, but now it's questionable. Will he be ready for week one? Coach just broke the news at the press conference. Caleb Williams is ruled out for week one. He's dealing with just a sprain, so it's not as bad as we thought, but they're going to err on the side of caution. And if I'm being honest, Caleb Williams hasn't been that impressive through his first two years. So you don't got to tell King Sponge twice about opportunity. So our first regular season action winning the job, I guess you could say, by injury, but it's going to allow us to face the Carolina Panthers and Bryce Young. Bryce Young trying to improve year after year, but King Sponge over here is just looking to secure the job. Trust me, we've seen the passing numbers from the last couple of years, and it's not that impressive. Let's shake off any nerves and just let one rip. Cross the middle. Yep, that's Komet again. We can rely on the big tight end. Moving down pretty quickly, DJ Moore looks open, and we got him. Touchdown, our first drive of the game. We connect with DJ Moore. Can you tell King Sponge has been waiting three years for this opportunity? After two years in the UFL, two years playing backup, we have a crack at the starting job if we do well today. Defense gives up a touchdown, but we hold on the extra point attempt. Look at that. That's Branch out there. The USC receiver we just drafted, and I'm going to hit him up. Little RPO. Brian Thomas from LSU holds on for the quick drag touchdown. Another costly turnover for Carolina gives us the ball right back in a good position, and I got a man. Hold on now. Who told King Sponge he can cook like this? Touchdown, DeAndre Swift. Inside the red zone now. Let's dump it out to Brian Thomas once more. Love to see a shaking three tackles and a touchdown. Are you kidding me? My guy out here making King Sponge look good. We came into the league with this man. Wow, okay. Coach taking off the training wheels. It's fourth down. He's showing a lot of trust in us. We can deliver by this pass across the middle. That's DJ Moore. Could not have asked for a better regular season debut for King Sponge as DeAndre Swift just pads it on. Bears fans love it. King Sponge loves it. What's not to love right now? 
Who would have thought the same year the Chicago Bears draft Caleb Williams with round one pick one that a free agent quarterback, King Sponge from the UFL, is going to be the one that's turning a leaf and starting a new chapter for Chicago. Caleb Williams had two losing seasons and in year three, we're 1-0 and with King Sponge at the helm. Coach is going to have a hard decision on his hands, but we completed 79% of our passes, 295 yards and three touchdowns. Coach, after the game, talked with DJ Moore in the locker room and he wanted to just get word on how it felt with King Sponge out there. That was all Coach needed to hear. He's riding with us again for week two. And in conjunction, they're putting Caleb Williams on the injured list for at least two more games. We fought for the job and finally in year three we got our chance and the job is ours due to unfortunate injury to Caleb Williams but a job is a job and we're going to keep writing it out throughout the season. Caleb Williams suffered an injury in the last game of preseason in year three King Sponge was thrusted into the limelight the free agent quarterback got a win in his first ever game starting the regular season he was a 64 overall when he came in and now he's an 80 overall from one star walk-on quarterback at Boise State to UFL champion this is King Sponge's moment he's been dreaming for leading the Bears towards the Super Bowl. And if you recall at the end of the last episode, we got news that we'll be starting for at least the next two games. Caleb Williams is dealing with a minor injury he suffered in the final game of preseason. DeAndre Swift, a major threat on the ground last week. But the story of this one is Shadur Sanders of the New Orleans Saints going up against King Sponge of the Chicago Bears. We have been chomping at the bit for the starting role. The hard part is that Caleb Williams is in front of us on the depth chart. And Caleb Williams is no easy feat to overcome. Man's got talent, but he's been a little underwhelming for the first couple seasons. And honestly, that's where we come in. King Sponge with a lot of experience, two years in the UFL, a couple years waiting in the wings. We have the tools, we have the ability to make things happen. These two weeks that we have guaranteed at the starting role are going to be crucial for any hope at getting the job going forward. Cooper DeGene, the Iowa standout, made the stop, and our coach says go for it on fourth, and we hit the tight end across the middle. Big play. Starting out week two, action with a bang. I see Brock Bowers getting so open in the corner. Touchdown, baby. Oh, he stepped out. Well, that's great. We get stopped and have to settle for three. Down by four. We've been driving down this field looking for the open man. That's Zachariah Branch with the catch. But on this one, we're going to go to Branch and see if he can score with that little read option. He had dreams growing up of playing on the gridiron at the biggest stage, and we're doing it. When we were just a one-star high school recruit, we still bet on ourselves. Checking off so many professional firsts here. This has been encouraging stuff. 10 seconds left here. Just a couple more opportunities across the middle. It's Brock Bowers. We hit him. After waiting in the wings for a couple years, man, this is exactly the type of performance we needed to have. Little deja vu here. I'm going back to the play action, see if Brock Bowers can get open. He's not. I'm just going to dump it to Swift, and he does the rest. Shadur Sanders has his guys playing inspired football right now because they've been able to score two touchdowns and get right back in it. If I can just finish this drive off with a score, we should be in the driver's seat for the win, and look at DJ Moore, man. So inspirational. Bears fans, how many times do you get to hear this? Your overpowered offense was too much to stop today. Chicago moves to 2-0 and oh, thanks to King Sponge and a masterclass performance. Shadur Sanders could not keep up. Week three, we're in Miami. Michael Penix Jr., the UW product, is the quarterback for the Dolphins. He's got Tyreek to throw to. We need to soak up this opportunity because honestly, this may be the last game we get to play in for a little while. Caleb Williams is cleared and ready to go for next week. Yeah, ain't gonna lie. We love our tight end room out here and we're gonna spread the love. Let Brock Bowers get something too. That one-two punch is filthy. A little bit tougher sledding in this one so far, but we'll dump it out to Swift, see if he can get that screen up the field. Got the boys just a couple of yards out. Hand off. Swift, get in there. This should be all tied up now. With just one minute left in the game, I'm ready to be a hero. And we got so much time. Really, I got to give kudos to the offensive line. They've been holding up really well in this one. If I can just get the team down into field goal position, that'll be all she wrote. So on the RPO, we're going to dump it out to Komet once more. And the tight end is going to keep rumbling. With just 10 seconds left, let's hand it off before taking a timeout. Try to get a couple more yards. The snap, the kick. It is good. The Bears win. Last second thriller there, Chicago comes out on top. King Sponge was able to drive down the field and get us to a position to win. We are 3-0 on a young season, and man, oh man, number nine has come to play. Can't complain with 249-2 and two and the win. Two teams sitting at 3-0 and in the young season going to face off here in week four, but you see that right. Caleb Williams is back, and they gave him the starting job again. So I guess it was just the tip of the cap to King Sponge, and a thanks for going 3-0. and Now here's the bench. Ain't gonna lie, I feel a bit like chopped liver, like all my contributions were for nothing if they're just gonna hose me like this. 
Like Caleb Williams is totally a good player. I get that. But man, I just feel like we deserve a starting role somewhere at least. Bears now are up to four in O. 26-20 was the final in this one. And Caleb Williams got it done. So it looks like I'm going to be on the bench for the foreseeable future. Fast forward to the end of the season. Caleb Williams was pretty efficient, but only 2,000 passing yards in the remaining 14 games. King Sponge, on the other hand, compiled 60% of what Caleb Williams was able to do in just three games. Nonetheless, we made the playoffs and are in the wild card round against the Cowboys. So it's only fair I get to keep the bench warm in the playoffs as well. Definitely going to need to have a talk with the front office here after the season. But for now, go Bears. Let's take down them boys. We're in Jerry's world. Dak Prescott still hanging in there. This would be big for Caleb Williams if he can make a playoff run. But I got to believe that the office is not happy about low pass production the last three years. Wait a minute. Is that 21 in the backfield? I know that's not Zeke. That must be Derrick Henry out there. Well, the Cowboys are up 17 to seven. Caleb Williams in the offense been stuttering. And officially the Chicago Bears are first round exits. It got close at the end, but it didn't matter. Dak and the boys hold on 26-21. Losing to them boys in the first round is almost like a surefire thing that you'll know heads are about to roll. Well, although losing the playoffs stings, the Cowboys went on and won the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. NFL draft came and went. I'm not going to lie. This team is looking good. Gilmore and Vaughn, two hidden dev traits picked up in the draft, will plug in at positions of need. This Chicago Bears team is full of stars. Just one problem, they got my boy King Sponge still second in the depth chart. Another preseason in the books, and I'm sick and tired of having to prove my myself. I was preseason player of the year two years ago. So as much as I'm excited about the Bears team, I'm going to request a trade. I'm 27 years old. I'm not getting any younger. And while the front office starts ironing out those details, let's take a look at week one, the season opener, Bears Eagles. Week one, Caleb Williams drops back. He's looking for an open receiver. He's got a man. It's Brian Thomas on the sidelines. And with that big catch, the Bears are looking to score only down 35 to three. Despite a valiant attempt from Caleb Williams at the end, this game was wraps. In week one, Jalen Hurts cooked us 307 yards, five touchdowns. Caleb Williams, not so much. A measly 160 in one touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finished. The trade was made. We are staying in Chicago? That's right. The front office got busy and they sent Caleb Williams to New England after a brutal after a brutal home opener and abysmal passing stats the last three years. They're finally giving King Sponge his opportunity. Not only are we the QB, they brought in Bijan Robinson for us. Bijan Robinson, 96 overall running back. That will be a difference maker. And of course, how can I forget about Big Will Campbell? But wait, it gets better. We brought in Walter Nolan too and third string cornerback Dalen Evans. Everett from Georgia. Where one quarterback leaves, another joins us. Jordan Travis is the backup. I am pumped up for this one. My first start in year four. Waiting in the wings no longer. It is King Sponge's time to shine. Let's play some football. And of course, I got to pound the stone with Bijan Robinson up the middle. That man's going to be nifty for us. Having a tight end for a security blanket is one of the best things that can happen to you. And we got two of them out here. Let's go. Hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows, but we have a real opportunity here. Let's go right back to our tight end. There he is. Touch Town, baby. Bijan Robinson may be on the team, but we still got guys like DeAndre Swift to still get in there and make some plays out of the backfield. And yeah, DeAndre Swift is still very much a threat as he's going to get open here once more, wreaking havoc out of the backfield and down the field. I need to put the offense on my back this drive because we need points. And Bijan, he's open. We got him. There we go, making a difference on his new team. And with one minute left in the game, it literally comes all down to this. Cole Komet, he bounces off the tackler. Big play. The penalty pushed it back to a 60-yarder. That pass got it to 51. And now that run has got it to a reasonable 39. And there you have have it folks king sponge in year four gets the start against the ravens brings us a victory 320 passing yards three touchdowns we did throw one in but all in all this was a good performance on the road against san francisco never an easy task and it's going to be difficult niners hang on and win so unfortunately we're going to fall and go one and two in the early season man i talked a big game and after four years in the league i expected better numbers than this not bad by any means but when you compare it to caleb williams production it's not all that much different. My first year at the helm, we finished eight and nine and don't make the playoffs. So I'm going to have to put in a lot of work this off season. Maybe even go train with Patty Mahomes a little bit. I don't know. Heck, I'll probably just buy the TB12 method and that should do me right. 2027 season recap and geez. All right. Dallas Cowboys go back to back. Talk about a successful preseason and off season going into year five. We're up to 88 overall. The TB12 method kicked in nicely. In year five, the margin for error is slim. We can't trip up now or else they're going to go looking 
looking for a replacement. If you were around for King Sponge UFL days, you would know that the Vikings actually gave King Sponge his initial chance and cut him after only one preseason game. Some offseason shakeup here. It looks like we lost Cole Komet, and that's a bummer. So we're going to have to rely on guys like DJ Moore, who's still hanging out here and getting touchdowns. This is 100% a revenge game, and I'm ready to cook. Brock Bowers, come through for me, my man. Going to need the whole squad to step up if we're going to beat the Vikings and if we're going to make a run. I'm going to toss the crack out to Bijan Robinson. He's going to run for it, and I think he's got it. Touchdown. And I absolutely love the fact that we're up big right now and we're just padding it on. Just under three minutes left in this one. Even though we're up by two touchdowns, it ain't over until it's over. Aggressive play calling. We felt like we had nothing to lose. Let's give it to Bijan to do the rest and score. We're up by three touchdowns. This one's over. The season opener against the Vikings is going King Sponge's way. He leads the Bears to victory. Another year as the franchise quarterback, 3,050 yards, 21 touchdowns to one end, and then also tacked on 790 yards on the ground. And yeah, oof, it looks like Chicago really was the problem as Caleb Williams is flourishing in New England. 4,000 yards, 32 touchdown passes. Well, it looks like the dream of winning a playoff game here in Chicago is going to probably be not happening with, uh, well, Eagles destroying us. Yeah, everything we did today was in vain. I don't think I've ever been more humiliated in a game than this. 47 points the Eagles score. 2028 was not our year. Chargers end up taking the Super Bowl home. Bro, hold the phone. This next year, we popped off. We changed the scheme up a little bit, and wow, it paid dividends. This year feels like the year for King Sponge to cement himself in NFL history. The NFC playoffs run through Chicago. King Sponge is ready to run it back here against the Bucks. It's surprising to see the production that we're having this year because we've lost even more players. There's no longer Bowers on the team. You may not be familiar with Cameron Stewart, but trust me, he was a speedster from like the 2027 draft. Something's jacked up with Madden settings, and man, it's a bummer to see because we're on a run this year. Holy injuries. Yeah, there's something off with stamina, fatigue, whatever it is. I hope we can get through this game in one piece because this is concerning stuff, but oh my goodness, what a touchdown. My guess is this fatigue bug is also affecting the defense, and that is extremely unfortunate because the Bucks were able to score, but we score right back. Literally feels like there's pressure to score each and every drive when you got backups in and the defense faltering. There's no room for mistakes, and... We just made one. Bro, we're down by seven. It literally feels like the Eagles playoff game from last year. We just can't keep up because of the, the bug. This is unbelievably difficult with what's going on right now. Thankfully, we can cash in with a touchdown, but there's a minute left and we're losing. All right, this is getting a little out of pocket right now. I don't think the Bucks should have beat us as the one seed. We got handled because, uh, well, it definitely got wacky and wild. The 2029 season recap, the Panthers are Super Bowl champions. King Sponge really starting to dial up a notch late in his career here. 4,300 yards, 33 touchdowns this season. And the tight end from Alabama put up a monster season this year. 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns. At 11 and 6, we finally got another crack into the playoffs. Our team is an 85 overall, and I feel like we're on the decline a bit. So it's this year or bust. First drive of the game quickly down into the red zone. We got Cameron Stewart underneath here. We're just that much closer. It's playoff football. It's fourth down. I'm going to go for it because I think we have a chance here. And that is Calhoun, the stud tight end, keeping the feet in bounds. Touchdown. It's the playoffs. We can't afford to get down, but we got a streaking receiver there. Hauls it in. Yes, sir, Branch. First and goal, 15 seconds left. I'll give it to Bijan, see if he can cash in. He does. It's a battle in the wild card right now. We're down by three, but that touchdown will get us right back in it. When an opportunity presents itself to get some insurance points, that is what you do. You get them insurance points. Good work moving it down the field. We can ice out the rest of this game, and that first down will do it. Well, I misspoke here because that was not going to do it. We have to fight for the last second here. Throw one up to Bijan. It's not going to work. Overtime football. Playoff football, the stakes are super high right now, and I think we might have the connection we need. Touchdown. Oh, man. OT thriller. Touchdown, the Bears. Bryce Young is literally exploiting our defense right now as we're going to have to do this all over again. Double OT. Second and 17. Man, that is a long way to go, but thankfully, in through the zone coverage, pierced it for a big play. Refusing to be deterred. It's third down. I think we can float this one up and over. It's hanging up there for so long. A little too long. Fourth down. The big field goal was enough. We survive in double overtime.
that was insane wild card football we needed the dub here king's punch able to check off a playoff victory his first ever one now it's the divisional round and you saw the scene it looks like a snowy chicago going up against Shadur sanders and the saints again these type of games i love to just kick back relax and watch a snow game in the nfl it's always oh man and as i was yapping branch got hurt couple field goals so far through this one we're down by a single point but on the run i think we got him let's let Bijan run this one in i think he can do it if he just gets the protection nah third and goal why not try it again Bijan, this time up the middle we got it Shadur sanders in the saints an absolute costly turnover in the red zone they were driving down the field to score with a minute left since they turned it over we can just run the clock out and use up all their timeouts in Bijan, what a juke third and nine Bijan, one more dose up the middle he breaks through it's officially over king sponge victory formation all wraps here bears 20 saint 16 we're advancing to the next round we're getting hot at the right time and we just got to keep the mojo up here against the bucks this time for the nfc conference championship we're on the road defense was quickly in trouble giving up a touchdown and we're down but i'm able to strike right back to calhoun big touchdown to even this one out see if wilburn can pick up a first down here he sure can a good spot to be in here at the end of the first quarter going for the end zone calhoun is a target machine and he's got hands of glue you know i never gave the bucks a full assessment but they're cooking us right now and it's actually a bit wild 20 points already in the first half and that means i'm forced to play catch up toe for toe here throwing out to our speed threat cameron stewart's got the easy touchdown he had his man beat King Sponge has any nerves, he better not show them now because we have to step up with a three-point deficit minute to go. I don't want to just settle for three. I think I just want to go for the win. You feel me? I think we still got room to sprinkle in a handoff here or two. It might add a good wrinkle to the offense. I haven't seen Bijan Robinson all game, so I really hope he didn't get injured. This is literally the definition of crunch time with 20 seconds left. We're going out to Calhoun, and he's got it. Oh my goodness, I love that tight end. And it's officially in the books. We make the final stand, 38-34. Chicago's going to the Super Bowl. What a ride it has been. Man, this Jets team has been red hot, and they're at 90 overall. This is a frightening opponent. But no worries, we're ready for the Super Bowl. King Sponge has been prepping his whole life for this. The man has been dreaming of this day since he was in high school and only rated a one-star recruit. Still dreaming of it as he worked his way through Boise State and still dreaming of it when he had to go through the UFL to get another chance to be in the pros. Without further ado, it's Super Bowl Sunday. It's time for a Jets bears matchup this is a crazy matchup that you would never see in real life today king sponge finally has a star under his name it took seven years in the league but we finally have it and on the first play of the super bowl we're throwing a interception across the middle unbelievable way to start but the defense playing tough early one for five so far already down seven zero in the super bowl we have to come through here and i'm gonna see an open tight end spring loose and he's got so much space in front of him that could go all the way not quite he picked a pretty good time to get the star under his name because it's the super bowl and there's really no bigger stage than this so that's all down to this we're into the end zone we're tying this thing up the bears defense comes through with a big turnover and we got some motion out here dropped so many obstacles in our way but we have to finish and finish this drive with a touchdown calhoun again this guy is a monster back and forth this battle's been going it is fourth quarter action we're down by three and oh that's a big breakup shiloh sanders with the defense defense held giving us another chance here on offense we need to come through for those guys no breakup on that play we have life and i'm gonna jump it out to calhoun second and inches right back to the tight end this time that's our backup making the play just about two minutes left we can finish it off here with a big touchdown he's got a step calhoun is a monster i can't believe how much separation this guy gets right over shiloh with 44 seconds left, adversity has striked, and Calhoun's going to be the one to bring us down this field again. King Sponge literally trying to muster up everything he's got to be a hero, and we get intercepted. And heartbreak. This is the worst possible ending I could think of. The New York Jets win the Super Bowl. Chicago Bears fall, and King Sponge worked so hard for this and fell short still a good sport dapping up the other team but inside he's crushed he's broken he's destroyed all the hard work all the blood sweat and tears the bears are on the decline this team is not going to be in shambles next year because people are getting older overalls are decreasing the contracts are not the same so that was probably the last of a closing window jets on the other hand look like a powerhouse did what we could 
We put up a fight in this one, but the costly pick at the end was just a little too much. Fast forward one year later, and the Bears are back in the playoffs. Bears squeak out a close one, 27-24 in the wildcard round. And it was a theatrical performance in the divisional as the Bears get by the Giants, 38-31. The Bears keep it moving. 38-36 in the NFC Championship. The Buccaneers fall just short last second. And dreams may just come true after all as the Bears are back. Back to the Super Bowl, going up against the Chargers. This is going to be a fun matchup. King Sponge put his head down and grinded in the offseason after getting heartbroken in last year's Super Bowl. Just like Michael Jordan hitting the gym the day after the postseason run, King Sponge pulled off his little rendition of that, and he's back. And King Sponge has finally unlocked an X Factor. It only took this long, and uh-oh, this is deja vu of when he sold the last Super Bowl. I guess it's a nightmare instead of a dream. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl chokes. That is gonna define King Sponge, who had his trials and tribulations getting to this point. You don't know pain until you've lost back-to-back -back Super Bowls.